Hello, everyone. Welcome back to a new episode of It's a Progressive World, a lighthearted show about everything and nothing. As always, you can find timestamps down below and please like and subscribe. All right, Sam, we have a bunch of fun stuff for today. Yeah, I think so. Well, I hope so. We have the we're going to talk about the controversies within the field of comedy, I suppose. We're going to talk about uh, Russell Brand and Hassan Minaj. And we're going to talk about U.S. politics and developments in debates uh, among the op- opposition to the establishment, to the deep state. I don't, I don't know who's opposing who, <laughs> but we're going to talk about Peter Dow, uh, Jenk Uger, Brianna, Greyjoy, and third party, Democratic Party opposition. I don't, I don't know. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> and Vivek, Vivek, another anti-establishment, although he's going... Again, he's doing the route from within the establishment. <laughs> I will be the, I will be the butterfly. I will cocoon. I will cocoon within the Republican Party, and I will butterfly into an anti-establishment um, uh, beauty. So we're going to talk about U.S. politics, the comedy stuff, and we have a, a tiny bit of an alien update, which is I I found very interesting, and I think finally. The alien update today can put all uh, doubters like Camier uh, <laughs> to shame. Uh, there are I, I don't want to even I don't want to spoil it, but there are over a dozen, over a dozen Camier. I tell you, uh, whistleblowers now. <laughs> it's it's catching on. It's becoming a fad. So uh, we have the alien and stuff. Oh, and there is some updates regarding Nagorno Karabakh region. Armenia and Azerbaijani conflict. So that's, as always, uh, a bit of geopolitics there. But that's about it, I think. Am I? Oh, we have a tiny bit. We're going to talk about Lauren Handjob Bobart and John. Uh, I dress like a hobo featherman. So we're going to talk about those two as well. Yeah, no, no, that's it. You did a great job. Although the alien video, I haven't seen it yet uh, because I mean, you. Uh, I, I just shared it with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I actually haven't even put it here, so we'll we'll add it to the lineup. But yeah, a lot of fun little stuff. And we start with <laughs> Peter Dow, which I might I must admit that I've only now heard for the first time in my life. And he doesn't sound how I pictured him to sound, but anyway. No, he does not. No, I yeah what do you so which one so peter dow as yeah many people may have heard has recently become the campaign manager of cornell west after quitting the campaign of marion williamson and there was a shall we say a strong reaction from within the left mm-hmm. to his to his election to his uh you know his selection. Uh, elevation selection yeah that's the perhaps best word and he was accused of being incompetent, uh, of being an infiltrator, <laughs> <laughs> of being generally an asshole, and we don't like him. That was the general vibe that everybody gave. So he went on a sort of apology. Yeah, to exactly. Team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, on savvy steps and um, uh, bad faith, uh, in which he answered for his past crimes <laughs> 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 of supporting Hillary Clinton. Uh, and uh, yeah, so yeah. I, before and I, like you know, I using gender off, arguments. I mean, as far I've reached the yeah. point where he also apologizes for you know using gender based arguments. I don't know. He apologizes for a lot of things. He basically apologizes for being born. <laughs> I'm sorry, my he's mom like, should have aborted. He's like, so I'm in this so video, <laughs> here in this interview with Bree, bad faith. <laughs> he's literally like Bree, you know. Then I came across you and your arguments, and you know, now I see the light. Yeah, I saw the Chris. No, he, okay, just you. I mean, I'm just gonna give you a, a bit of a more concise thing. Didn't you find him to be? I found him to be very insincere. I mean, if just mm. his overt, his overt, phony sincerity yeah. made me very unsure. Yeah. Of his sincerity, if that makes any yeah sense. Listen, I don't I, know. And I, I just the fact is, I really don't know him. 
so mm. it makes it a bit hard i mean even even i haven't even watched like two other interviews with him but yeah i see what you mean i'm 50 50 on it and i think if i just watch two other interviews get to know him better you know read his body language did able. you see the savvy saps one <laughs> no no i it, no the thing was he kept saying to uh both of them you ask so such good questions. Oh yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. You know you're lost, and, and I'm so glad. I, 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 I'm so glad that you gave me the time to come here, and and I don't want I don't want Doctor Cornell West to be damaged because of oh. my mistakes. I don't want I if I came to this campaign to help the campaign. I have no intention of damage. It just it was such okay, a I yeah, don't know man. It was such you. a goody two shoe. You believe me or? Yeah, no, I agree with you. Know. <laughs> My acting was so good, <laughs> but I convinced you that he's a liar. No, I but, agree with you. No, I, I don't even know if he's a liar. Not that I care, by the way, if he's sincere. I think sincerity is very much overrated, if anything. But it just was very phony acting mm. types. I, again, maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm re- reading too much into it. But not, I, I mean, and I kind of lost respect for him, man. When you come like you like this level of apologetic and you know and then I listen to my critics Bree and I listen to my critics oh, yeah. and I was like I need to change I'm I have I'm done with the Democratic Party now and it's over and we need <laughs> I no, don't know you've I don't know I just... me. Uh, well, you should watch. I feel bad now. <laughs> no. You should watch it yourself. A phony piece <laughs> of shit. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't do this, camera. Watch it yourself. No. I feel I'm, I exaggerate, and then you may have get the wrong idea. So, I mean, no. everything he said was good. It's just that we are talking body. You know, we are talking. Yeah. Maybe play a bit, just so. You, yeah, because he gets right into it here. So yeah, play. yeah, yeah, exactly. Go. And I thought, okay, I'll run a small media company and all the stuff that Tom and I were writing, that sort of pro Clinton, pro Hillary content, um, would go through this, you know, hire writers and we do this in a very sort of media oriented way. And it got more and more intense, as you and I know, because we we had so many um, sort of disputes at the time. We were on opposite sides, you know. As you say, by necessity, if I was a Hillary Clinton supporter, I'm a Bernie Sanders opponent. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it went downhill from there. And, you know, I'll stop there, but I think yeah, we sure. all know so, how it turned out. Uh, I, I recommend that people listen to Tori Spout. Why is it so the dramatic? Person, like, what happened? Um, to... Kind of really, I didn't. And I found it because um, <laughs> this is a big politics. I mean, well, it tells Sabby, and, and she did a great interview. I thought it was very fair. She gave me room to speak, but she asked some tough questions. And uh, as I know you do as well. I mean, I, you know, we've spoken as before. I do you, do as... um, you know, from my perspective at the time, I did place the representation of women at the forefront of my 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 rationale for doing it. And then when the sort of the real battles happened between the Hillary and Bernie camps, there was a real sort of focus on, yeah, I didn't like the term Bernie bros, but indeed there was a focus on white male supporters of Bernie Sanders being sexist. And I did use, I, I did do that gender-based argument. You know, I did, and I was wrong. The thing I regret the most though, Brianna, about that, Man, this second time that I'm listening it, I really feel like, you know, he's apologizing for like this five year period of his life where he was like a complete like drunk out of control, you know. Yeah, like, exactly. Hurting right? family members and like, you know, just like absolutely. <laughs> like You are so <laughs> right. He's like those drug addicts that they're like uh, they after they've been a week or two weeks in a <laughs> camp or something and they're like look i've been sober for two weeks now <laughs> and i realized that i've made a lot of mistakes during <laughs> Stole the last five years i yeah i supported hillary i know it was <laughs> disgusting i mean i would do anything for drugs at that <laughs> but it was, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah it was just i mean again he said all the right thing everybody's saying the right things here in these videos uh but and the thing that made me really suspicious man was like he's like the coronel thing he's like you know, when you talk to this man, you are so, so impressed. His knowledge, his depth of knowledge, his his humanity, his humanity is on parallel. Then you talk to him, you realize he's somebody who's been fighting the same fight, and he's on. And I don't know, man. I don't think if I meet but goddamn Jesus, I'll be this impressed. To be honest, like seriously, I'm like, okay, you're cool, Jesus. I see you can walk on water. You make great wine. 
I'm very <laughs> impressed, especially the wine part. I mean, but like I, it's just too much, you know. I yeah. don't get, I, you know, I don't know. I don't talk about my dad like that. I'm <laughs> just saying, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. But hey, yeah. I mean, but she, hey, I mean the right. headline right. at least. I like the headline. It, I don't know. It says blah 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 blah, and then here the word transformation. It's like in all caps, and I think yeah, yeah. At the very least, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? They refer to both in Sabi's interview and in Bree's interview, and he keeps bringing what, the night that, that he hit that... rock bottom. No, no, <laughs> he crashed his <laughs> his grandma's no, wedding funeral. <laughs> wedding I funeral. Had to... <laughs> yeah, I had funeral. to sell my uh, grandma's uh, TV and suck a lot of cocks. <laughs> I had to do that. <laughs> That's when I knew I couldn't continue like this anymore. So the next That's day I, I got to up. Turn to green party. <laughs> sent Hillary an email. Said I'm out. <laughs> Ran for the woods. No, the, the thing he kept bringing up was that. <laughs> Uh, be- before Hillary Clinton in 2012 or was it 12, 20, it was a 2008? Man. You know, no problem. No <laughs> exactly, <debt>. exactly. <laughs> he was exactly he was supporting the Green Party candidate then, Jill Stein. That's how he, he knows the Jill gym Stein. three times a week. <laughs> Start his days with a green smoothie. <laughs> no. He would drink occasionally at parties and gatherings. <laughs> One or two beers. That's it. <laughs> There was no heroin in back then. <laughs> so he's so apologetic just for so like even Matt, if I like I didn't, but if I happened to support Hillary, I would have still be like, yeah, whatever. I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> I wouldn't be. I mean, I guess he went crazy on Twitter, so <laughs> he had to. Yeah, yeah that's he had to repent. That's why I thought he was a much more kind of. I I pictured him as this kind of more like aggressive, deep voiced kind of guy. Yeah, me too. I I I because musician as well. I thought he's gonna be very deep voiced. I don't know yeah. why, but maybe because jazz and all that. I don't know. I assume. <laughs> and he was in a Catholic militia or not Catholic, a Christian militia in Lebanon. So you would think, but doesn't he do? Doesn't he look I mean, like? I'm judging him on. <laughs> Six minutes yeah. of video, <laughs> and my impression. And you, know, you yeah. I, I, I did great. Team. But but doesn't doesn't he look like every dad in Middle East? Kind of like <laughs> it, seriously, he look like I swear to you, in in like every Lebanese. <laughs> what do you want him to do though? <laughs> Yeah, no, but every Lebanese, every Iranian, every I, I have like they reach middle age, forty or something. Every hair in their body goes white, <laughs> except the eyebrows mm-hmm. and just the mustache. The rest is all <laughs> white for some. I don't know what it's going. No, I'm, I'm not criticizing. I'm <laughs> that's hilarious. Now. By the way, only now I realize that <laughs> that's a Cornell West fo- a poster behind him, and that's Cornell West. That that picture looks more like you know. Lion Somebody King. who ri- rides motorcycles or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, it looks like a Hell's Angel poster. Yeah. yeah. I got to give me a bit of Lion King, like, symbol <laughs> vibes because of the hair. La- like a lion riding a bike. <laughs> yeah, lion riding. That's a good compromise. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but, okay. Bri- but Brie was very happy with uh, him and Sabi was okay with him, I think. So I think he's winning over... He's if he does a couple of more self flagellations and repentances, are you yeah. are you happy with him or? Yeah, unfortunately, all this work will. <laughs> In but a year thought... two, he's gonna regret this. He'll be like, "No, I went too extreme." You know, too ex- yeah, I was <laughs> I had too to clean. sell my house. <laughs> now <laughs> I'm sober, I was too but bro, <laughs> so <laughs> basically. <laughs> I never got paid, not, not because they didn't want to. There was just no money. <laughs> uh, he's, uh, yeah, I don't know what his game is because he kind of, it felt like when he left even Hillary's side, man, it did feel like Hillary didn't, so, because he used to have a website for a while. Uh, well, I mean, Hillary that... was over. Hillary, Hillary was over after that loss. He had to go somewhere. He could have stuck Democratic Party, of course. But the hit, hit, no, I no. mean, Hillary. Hillary was over, but 2017, 18, expected... I mean, that was it. 
No, I know, but after she lost, he he set up a website, and I think he expected her to give to throw him some money or something mm. for that website, or you know, yeah, get take him under his wing. I I don't know. I don't know what's go, what's going on because at the same time, if he's that calculative and he's like a political, uh, like a Machiavellian guy who's just trying to like you know make a buck or whatever. Why would you like do Green Party? Yeah. Or, Cornell, you know what I mean? Like, this is really not what Machiavelli would suggest. I'm just saying. Yeah. But hey, I mean, I'm joking. The, um, the Cornell he West Party, yeah, they probably. What, they have money? He come on, some... man. They don't have money. He's, come on. <laughs> if they have money, he has to pay back the loans. <laughs> First <laughs> of all. <laughs> And the child support. That's like no, and I mean, first of all, no, Cornell West. No, listen, by the way. Oh, no. Actually, the Green Party, Cornell West is only in the primary. So Cornell West is not... Get... I think he's funding his own primary, right? Like, through donations. I guess, yeah. Not, not necessarily the Green Party yet. So, I mean, I think he is probably collecting money, Cornell, a little bit here and there. Enough to have a few. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But not... I don't think it's... Even like half, would you think he's paid half as much as the campaign manager of uh, Republican or Democratic Party? No, hundred percent no. But he wasn't that anyway, right? Like he, he... no, he wasn't. You're right. He was like yeah. the internet guy for Hillary. That's yeah. that was basically. It. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it's still not bad. I mean, he pretty much career-wise, like, you're digi- right. Digital, but... yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. But yeah, listen, yeah. he can come back. I think if he. It goes on a different I apology. <laughs> Listen, <no. laughs> I wasn't myself when I stopped drinking, so I decided to moderate it. <laughs> now I'm a Republican. Yeah. I would like to run the next campaign if possible. <laughs> Vivek, I think, is anti establishment. And I don't know if you talk to a man, but when you talk to a man, <laughs> I don't know, man. The, uh, anyway, but before going to these, yeah, Jenk, what happened to Jenk? Uh, interview let's not forget about it yeah he's right here he's next so you watch this um yeah <laughs> I, I, I guess i watched was... until until here i mean it was such a jank interview and i mean one point he gets so pumped up i mean i'm pretty sure i heard this was over his own shit that and sorry we'll talk about what this is about but he gets so pumped up that i think he like congratulates himself or like clap like something like that i mean Oh yeah, but hundred. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that happened like five times. So Jenk Uger went on the rising to argue for. He has a new book out. Uh, he has a new book out. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, he finished his book. It feels like you know when in a school, like finally a student <laughs> after like three months of begging do their assignment, <laughs> and you're like finally <laughs> they finished their book, and you I guess he was yeah, uh, you know trying to flog the the book first of all. But he was also sort of, you know, making the case for uh, uh, Biden and in the primaries of Democratic Party for like Marianne Williams mm. types, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I don't know who he was targeting here. I don't know. Yeah, like, seriously, I don't know. Yeah, but he was basically like, the, I don't, I genuinely, I'm interested to know who they are trying to, like, I feel like they, they're late of politics has such little appeal but good luck so he i guess he has to sell the books to someone listen every single person on this planet is progressive okay according to yeah you. according to jake yeah you yeah, name prog- person I, I is a republican registered lifetime was a republican president no actually mm. what they want are progressive stuff uh, it's just they and he'll prove it. He's gonna trip. prove something, but I didn't even understand what he's gonna prove by twenty twenty eight. There was something he said, he promised something. Did he again? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. it's it just hilarious. Let's just play, I guess, random. Play. Anyway. I don't remember that. But I remember him quoting six different. Uh, yeah, like I quote. I, like, I can prove it. I can in the book. It's been proven. <laughs> Chapter two. We show the polls that the country is progressive on every single issue. On every single issue, it's progressive. And then he backtracks later on. He's like, okay, 
country is progressive on a, every single economic issue and most social issues. But while he's uh, talking blah, blah, to blah, Robbie, or yeah. <laughs> it's like okay, I, I, I'm American I'm too. No, Robbie, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Robbie. You're not American. <laughs> Or he has no power at all. It isn't the LGBTQ person competing in sports in high school. That's not the issue in America, but it works brilliantly in tearing us apart. Where, uh, But the second part of it is a little bit true, Robbie, which is that some portions of... So I'm going to play a bit from middle, but yeah. And then, of course, it's all about the media, what they really talk about, right? The media doesn't show this. The media makes you hate that. and Yeah, oh, of course, they... That's it. Well, I mean, this is where I mean, they get into a back and Joy forth. And Robbie yeah. agree with him, though, and it's idiotic. Yeah. Like, that is the biggest. I mean, but that's. I do, don't want to even point that out because that's pretty much what all of these media people believe. They all believe like media is this sort of a all powerful thing that is yeah. controlling. I mean, Frankfurt School, in some ways, I guess, convinced everybody, you know. I mean, if. And no matter how very, corrupt. Yes, sorry. No, no, no. Sorry, I thought you were done. <laughs> no, I, I am. I am, really. <laughs> no. The DNC is. When does it stop? Yeah, it stops when we win the goddamn primary. And by the way, you that's all, oh, that's impossible. No, it's not. Bernie came this close in 2016, and he came this close in 2020. He was. He won the first three states. And who stopped him? Was it the Democratic Party that stopped him? No, it was corporate media that then well, he tons Jay. of negative coverage on bernie can we get past corporate media of course we can you don't i think know it it's Democratic super hard Party? and that's their wall that's meant to keep us out right but look at us you're doing it on rising we're doing it on young turks and all of us are getting past it by having these conversations and having it reach the american people can a progressive win a primary absolutely but, but, but we need to have progressives who try and who bring us together on economic issues like Bernie did in 2016. And then I guarantee you victory. That's also what the book is about. Do I guarantee you, you victory in 2028. Jane, you don't think that the Democratic Party played a role in Obama calling the leading candidates, including Pete Buttigieg, who at that Pause, point had sorry. done better than Joe Biden and asked him to yeah. Man, that was just like, I think that would definitely be the dumbest thing that, we, that we're going to hear today throughout the show. I mean, that was just the most well, empty uh, bunch of we're words. You're going to play PBD, man. No. Let's, let me careful with what you... Before but this PBD. guy, what, what is he guaranteeing? I still didn't get it. Yeah, that they that can a... uh, go get past the corporate media. No, but you see, no, no, no. He <laughs> said <laughs> he promised me a president. No, no, it was nothing. That it's done. It's hard. No, no, no. But we can do it. Okay. No, no, it's as can. if he's asking you to do one more push up. You're like, yeah, I know. It's so weird. <laughs> no, but I love the fact that among all of this conversation, the one thing that is for sure, Camier, is that people have no agency. It's <laughs> either like, the media or Obama calling people. It's not like people, there was a primary yeah. held and they decided not to vote for Bernie in yeah. California. None of that happened, actually. And but, I mean, he know, picked what... a bad example. Unless you think it's bullshit. Yeah, it was that, a terrible example. That, yeah. you know, they asked a bunch of the Democrats to drop out of the race, you know. Yeah. It is bold. I mean, what do you mean by bold? It was completely legal. And yeah. Oh no, no, no! I'm saying, fight, I'm saying, if yeah. he's yeah, if he doesn't think that, I mean, that's a bit insane. Or when if that's not true, of, which man, it is. That's that what I'm saying. No, it's just a bad example. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> I agree. It's a Take bad everything example. that I said no, after. No, but, but, it's a bad example. I forget it. <laughs> we are not gonna edit. <laughs> no, no, but, but what I'm saying is that these people, though, to them, it was. To these people, man, they think if somebody gives them a fair fight or tries, like, whatever they can, they're cheating. Like, haven't you seen how many times Brianna Greyjoy has brought this up? Obama made the phone call to Pete Buttigieg <laughs> and Elizabeth Warren to drop out. Oh, no. Like, you know, like... The, the how does she know, with... by the way? Do you think he accidentally called um, Bree? Oh, yeah, 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 probably. <laughs> Listen, 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 Pete. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> shit. What should I do? Yeah. Just hangs up. <laughs> Man, their whole, their, according to them, according to them, their whole movement basically was four phone calls away from 
<laughs> like distraction. <laughs> that uh, that's all it took for phone calls. That was it. <laughs> I couldn't yeah, do that. No, seriously, seriously. It's but... so hilarious. But the the it. I mean, I don't know what they fought over to even take a site or anything. But no, yeah, this ridiculous... was quite stupid. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was I, beyond. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I have. The thing is, not, like, we gotta watch the PVD video, and it's gonna be amazing. I hope. But yeah, I would agree with you. I between hosts, this was like, I mean, he's not a host here, but Jenk is generally a host. And yeah, this was the stupidest thing anybody has ever said. So <laughs> that's ridiculous. I I'll give you that. Um. Okay, should we go to Vivek? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, <laughs> so Vivek apparently Vivek Rama Swami is mm-hmm. under fire after family citizenship story and race comments. So pretty much, basically, he is for based on what I understand this whole thing is about. He's saying that there should be a citizenship test, and but then they found out that his parents uh, or his dad, um. Isn't a US citizen. Isn't a US citizen. But hey, they're saying Oh yeah, because no, sorry, when... there's another there's sorry, and there's the other thing. And he's also saying people who are born in the country should not that's where the hypocrisy comes. He says people who are born in the US, just being born in the US shouldn't make you necessarily American. And he yeah. that's how he became American. And previously yeah, he very... had lied that his parents are and his dad's American, and that's how I guess he became American or that too, but yeah. He yeah, he's gonna he's gonna try to get rid of birthright citizenship. Yeah. And uh, man... yeah. I mean the funny part uh, to be honest, I I mean look, I think there should I mean the citizenship issue is too complex to be honest. But yeah, no no, but I have another I had another comment and then let's move on to even the host. I was kind of thinking the, the though, host but funny. I guess not because of the I guess some kind of undertone of like you know not some kind the undertone of anti-immigration and all this ca- perhaps cancels that out. But couldn't sure. someone who's asking for um for there to be mm. citizenship test style exam can't they be like easily accused of of you know wanting more uh, government intervention and bigger government and bigger ruling and then government telling you more what you can and can't do? Couldn't a Republican even attack you on? On that. Yeah, that is so um I have to make fun of you now because you're doing a, such such a democratic brain right now that <laughs> can't we use their own logic and make them hypocrites and then call them out on their hypocrisy? Yeah, of uh, course you can. Yeah. And, but yeah, the and thing I, is they, they when it, whenever it comes to security and nationalism, the right wingers don't give a shit about <laughs> hypocrisy. <Yeah>. You know, <laughs> that they're like, Yeah, sure, we are hypo, yes. Yeah, double the budget of military, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> just, no, no, you're right, yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, sure, you can make that argument. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't know. I find, yeah, I mean, man, I'm, I'm generally, I'm not a big fan of birthright citizenship. I'm, I'm not a fan of automatic citizenship for anyone. To be honest, mm. I think anybody born inside, outside the country, you want to become a citizen with full rights you have to pass a test otherwise you just have to listen to what the state tells you and do what you're told i think that's how it should be but nobody <laughs> neither in iran nor <laughs> in here nobody was with me so i'm just gonna <laughs> shut up now and... yeah no that wouldn't be too bad because yeah man they, because i'm not against test it's just why shouldn't the people like craig ferguson used to have a really good joke he he became american citizen and he said I haven't seen anybody go going around in America and goes to like American bar and suddenly going, guys, pop quiz. <laughs> if you can't answer, who is the Supreme Court now? Citizenship revoked. Uh, it's, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. But and yeah, no, I, fair enough. Did, but what really interested me in this video though was the Carmichael's, and that's the evangelicals kind of reaction to, I think, Vivek, which is, I think evangelicals see him for what what he is, uh, like probably the biggest, one of the biggest phonies out there. I would say, yes, in politics right now, it's just such a phony. Vivek, huh? Yeah, no, yeah. like a. Empty I think he's bullshitter. Yeah. yeah, beyond like if you take all the other people in the in the yeah, 
he is everybody who's running he is probably maybe yeah, rfk across. maybe rfk no even more than him yeah he's much Shit, more he's slight. so young oh yeah i hate him so much man <laughs> i i have to say like the fact that he's young makes me hate him more obviously well anyway but the yeah carmichael the black guy on the who's replaced robbie he was very pretty much he was he was clearly very angry with Vivek and was upset with his rise and he kept saying that yeah. yes evangelical look I'm not saying this this is not my yeah. opinion but they will tear him apart over his <laughs> pagan beliefs over that was his pagan... too funny <laughs> this guy yeah, he was <laughs> all about religion I mean he said no I don't, this country should be run by a uh... Christian oh, and yeah. then Breeze oh, like the what ends, about a Jew um, okay fine Judeo Christian fine fine again oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no no not he, he even oh, the Abrahamic like Islam yeah, yeah he was like Abraham. Abrahamic at least at least they, you know it's like the same names you know Muhammad <laughs> Abraham Abraham similar stuff too going funny. on but too... Hindu a pagan <laughs> a pagan I mean come on Breeze Come on, Bree, oh, please. Sorry. And then one point, I think he says the funniest thing. Oh, I wish I knew where it was. Well, Which is like, well, I can't vote for someone who doesn't believe in anything. They'll just they, believe oh, something no, I be, quickly. That's it. Like, what? That's that's not funny. That's a actual saying, and it's oh, actually really? true. And I agree with him <laughs> there. But, but it's the, that's a famous. Uh, that's a famous expression. If you don't believe in anything, you fall. If you don't believe in something, you fall for anything. That makes no sense. But yeah. It does make sense. But because you could have already fallen believe... for something. <laughs> what? No. I'm not fallen for what? What do you mean? Because you already fell for something. So therefore, you're not going to okay. fall for something else. This is it's not excluding your past. It's saying if you don't believe in anything, if you don't believe in something now, you're open to falling for anything. I don't know. It's that very makes, good doesn't sense. make any it's sense. One of the best. It's really it not. does make a lot of sense. It makes, it makes a lot no of, sense. It does. It you don't get it because you don't believe in it. <laughs> so <laughs> no. It does. It sure, does. I forgot it does. you've become religious. Not religious, but you know. No, I no. <laughs> A man do. of God. A man, yeah. A That's why you're sending. This yeah, is like bro, this bro, is your corner. entrance to it. You know? You're like, yeah, PBD, huh? Really, yeah, PBD. He brings on a smart man. Yeah. He brings on a smart guest. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I'm just. If you don't, uh, it's not believing in something. It's not about religion. It's just if you don't have values that's what i'm guessing that's what the saying is saying if you don't have certain principle or values then you are open to doing anything so you you are become morally very flexible i guess yeah. that's the vanguard boys have a lot of values and position I, no 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 come on don't do this to me don't compare me to this please no no uh... my value my value is uh, making fun of other people's values I still have that, so that's good. But um, yeah, besides our disagreement, though, the black guy was quite interesting. <laughs> but I'm I'm glad they are open to all Abrahamic religions. So yeah. if you're certain kind of crazy, they are okay with it. But if you're the other kind of crazy, no. And what kind of level of crazy does this guy fall in? I think he's just, I don't, he's brain damage crazy because he had a stroke. So I don't. Federman. I, yeah, John Federman. So for people who don't know John Federman, due to John Federman dressing like a hobo, they had to change the Senate rules <laughs> so like people can, um, you know, dress however they like. And fine, I'm fine with that. I'm not a big fan of dress codes. But uh, the funniest thing was that then he said I would wear a suit if they. Uh, I mean, you can read that tweet, perhaps. Uh, oh, oh, if yeah. those jackoffs in the house stop trying to shut our government down, and fully support Ukraine, then I will, then I will save democracy by wearing a suit on the Senate floor next week. So what is funny here is like I didn't actually see the <laughs> the first part of his sentence before, um, but yeah. 
The jack off part? No, the government shutdown. Oh, all right. Yeah, and for, I then, yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I'm guessing he is trying to reach out the massive Pennsylvanian supporters of Ukraine. I I don't know what the fuck he's doing, but good luck I, to I you. Think Democ- I, 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 I mean, I, you know, he's a Democrat, right? But sure, like, but he's a bit of a leftist or something, no, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, but do people yeah, like in a, Pennsylvania know that? Or is that just like he has two personalities? On YouTube, he's a leftist. <laughs> and uh, he's just a Democrat. <laughs> they have no idea what, what he does at night. <laughs> yeah, and YouTube. apparently, yeah. On the weekends, he goes and fights in Ukraine war. So, I mean... <laughs> but if not, yeah. But otherwise, these are very, like, Democrat positions, you know, so... So I'm sorry, no. Democrats like this. My, my bad. So it, it appeals to certain Democrat yeah, voters. No, no. I don't think it appeals to Democrat voters. I think it appeals to the Democratic leadership clearly this one. Mm. Because I, I don't think most people, it's not that I think most people are, by the way, I don't think they're like, where is the funding? Why doesn't the funding from Ukraine doesn't go to our schools? Most people don't know where the fuck is Ukraine. They don't know. <laughs> Who is Ukraine? Tell, I, <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. I have been living in Pennsylvania for many years. I have lived my peaceful life. I need some support financially if Super. possible. I don't know who Ukraine is. I Russia sounds familiar. Don't like him. Like, you know, it's just most people don't care about this. So to say to, you know, it's just it was very weird. Um, I, I don't know. I guess maybe that's the yeah maybe that's the thing he knows nobody cares so he says the leadership are the only one who's gonna read this tweet so this is yeah. this one is for Pelosi <laughs> yeah and I don't even know where I mean where this really got the backlash and what's his name Max Blumen <laughs> I mean in this kind of world they got a backlash but who knows if it matters to him Max Blumenthal had a pretty funny response I don't know if you saw that oh yeah yeah he wrote that. Federman has insisted dressing like an adult toddler helped him return to work after a bout of after after a bout with depression. But now he says that he's willing to wear a suit if House Jagoffs dedicate more US billions to NATO's proxy war. Turns out he's more comfortable in World War Three than a hoodie. And I mean, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, completely. I mean, I, I wouldn't go as far as World War Three. Let's calm down. But <laughs> yeah, you know, fair enough for sure. Uh, just, yeah, it was so weird. Again, it's just such a weird sort of bargaining. Like I, as like it's like as a negotiator, I did not see that coming. <laughs> you know, just that uh, you go in. So, what can we do for you to wear a suit? Depression, increase now- funding for <laughs> Ukraine. <laughs> yeah. it's like what? What? Really? <laughs> okay. okay. Well, sure. Sure. We love to. <laughs> <laughs> you can count on yeah. us. Yeah, odd one that one. Yeah, anyways. But yeah, so had, yeah, there are a couple more of these. I don't know if you wanted to. Oh, take we can get rid of Mendez. Second, a we break. Can get rid of, the or Mendez just... one is just was almost like a cartoonish level of corruption. They found gold bars in his house. Yes. Right? Uh, they almost they found the picture of Bob Mendes <laughs> with a sack of money with dollar sign on the side. I mean, this is getting ridiculous, Bob. Seriously, sort yourself out. Uh, but uh, putting that aside, in a much more interesting event, you had the Bobart, uh, which I shared with you. So, so I'm pretty sure you know by now that Lauren Bobart was kicked out of a musical theater, Beetlejuice, which I'm a big fan of the movie. I must say it's a good one. Um for uh, making loud noises and all that and giving a hand job pretty much or groping her date who by the way her date happened to be a democrat who had a bar with drag shows and she <laughs> said she's gonna stop dating him because, because you know and all that so he got a hand job so I guess <laughs> that's too funny man I can't believe she's a grandma yeah I know 36 8 something like that is she hot in your view? No. Yeah, she's disgusting, right? Yeah, I mean, and so like she's so man, this is so stupid. She's so and white crazy. trash. I mean, it's yeah. unbelievable. It's like I swear to God, if that happened, like in a movie, I would say that's uh, badly written. Over, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's yeah. just you wouldn't think it. But 
I mean, this is what happened with in Iran after the revolution. So, you know, <laughs> you have you have the trash going to the government. So, I'm glad the Americans are doing it in a democratic way. It's much better that way. Oh yeah, Democracy. but I mean, just yeah. I mean, you know, all, all the time. Of course, it's just always hypocrisy and bullshit and all of that. But it's just so comical, like for a Republican family value, like. A uh, person uh, to, to the extent no, that no, she's I, like the opposite I disagree of that, I, you know. I she... I disagree hundred percent. Well, yeah. I, I I in my family, hand job in cinemas were part of our <laughs> family bad. <bandits. laughs> I just was, vaping. It was and, a rite of passage. <laughs> and the person behind being like, "Hey, I'm pregnant. Stop vaping," and she's just yeah. like, you know, Fuck it's you. like psh, yeah. one of those vapes where like. So much smoke comes out. I mean, come on, this, you're not on a balcony or something. You're, <laughs> you're in a movie theater. This person's behind you and you're vaping. In a musical, in a musical a music. movie theater. Which, yeah. From what I understand, is usually mu- there is much more lights and, you know, it's not like cinema dark and completely. I know. Yeah, so, yeah, where did she <laughs> <laughs> she it was like 4 a.m. in a big dark club or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, what's going on here? Or even it's not even a quiet cinema. It's full. Everybody's sitting. It's unbelievable. She's she's, she's like by the door, like <laughs> right, like right. <laughs> yeah. No, she's so. I mean, I assume she was probably drunk or high or something. Hey. No. Yeah. But they keep saying she's the most attractive member of the Congress. No, they like or. One of the most, I guess, Alexandria. Yeah, like, no, I mean, okay, that... I mean, sure. You one reason you would say that is because like eighty percent of them are like men, or like women above the age of like sixty. Man, I would so, take uh... Mitch McConnell over <laughs> her any day. <laughs> so it's not like she has a lot of competition. Mitch McConnell has a lot. He's a very comely turtle vibe that I like. You know, you can put him on a corner and he just eats his lettuce. <laughs> But she's like, I don't know. I it's just, she looks so. I feel I, she looks like a walking STD, to be honest. In, oh, yeah. I mean, she's sure. been, but, but she's been married for like 25 years or something since she was 12. Or, you know, she's one of those Christians. That's why she's so, I guess, worked up and giving hand jobs left and right because repressed, I guess. It's insane. Yeah. I, where do you stand on public? Hand job situation. <laughs> <laughs> Support or yeah, if you're 16 or 14 or 15 or whatever, and you sneak into a movie theater, understand. I, <laughs> I, I mean, but really that's not even go... all she did. If she just did that, <laughs> yeah, exactly. If she just did that, it would be fine. Just the vaping and the noise and no, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I'm glad this type of stuff is happening. Though. It's good. It's good. <sighs> uh, okay, as we wrap up the little political thing, there was just a political segment, U.S. politics, you could say. Oh, there yeah. is Well, Rupert Murdoch is... Yeah, no, I mean, what am I saying? Yeah, Fox News and all that. He's still the owner of that. He hasn't sold that. But yeah, he's <laughs> quote-unquote stepping down or in, entering <laughs> yeah. a new phase of his life. Is, where he's like... yeah. <laughs> entering a new phase is how... He put it, yeah. he did not put it as a stepping down. Or In his uh, email, he was very clear. Uh, I'm moving to a new phase of my life. Uh, and I'm very busy, Jerry. I'm sorry, we have to get divorced. <laughs> oh, sorry, you're my employees. I'm sorry. But uh, uh, he, yeah. Yeah, I he, mean... he said he's becoming chairman emeritus. Yeah. Which is, I mean, yeah, I guess you can no, at this point you can cool. name whatever yeah, yeah. you want. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean you need to make a new position. He's gonna be I mean, yeah. how old is he? And still uh, working. I mean, anybody else would want a promotion after they're like, okay, not... CEO and chairman yeah. and founder were cool in the beginning, but after <laughs> 20 years, trust me, it's not the same. Yeah. <laughs> you get used the... to it. He's... Look, he's 92, he... okay. Officially he's he was, 92. He was... Well overdue a promotion. <laughs> and he had there to are... create his own pro- position. So what is it? What is he? His CEO or He's chairman? Chairman, chairman Emeritus. There you so, go. And he said if he uh, if he manages to do well in his job as a chairman <laughs> Emeritus, in 10 years, he will be promoted to the supreme commander of the forces. <laughs> so that's how it's moving. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. He's just, he's just, he's just, yeah, exactly. He's like, he's finished climbing the ladder. Mm-hmm. He's just like making new steps yeah, on the exactly. ladder. <laughs> and I guess he got his son like a new internship as well. <laughs> and the guy, right? He's, yeah. <laughs> I should get you a really easy job as the head of <laughs> just listen to what the, your elders say <laughs> <laughs> he's, uh, yeah he's unbelievable he's just I love his email to his employees that he's let me reassure you I will still be part of this <laughs> I will still be watching over you. Yeah, if you think so, he's, yeah, I mean, you'd be delusional if you thought. <laughs> but what, what, why do you think he did it now? Though, Un- because... Until you see a cold body with your own eyes, don't <laughs> not going anywhere. <laughs> and even then, even just... then, <laughs> look to do some independent have testing. Took, have you heard of Jesus? <laughs> I'm gonna try to do another one of those. Yeah. <laughs> There is precedent for coming back. To <laughs> yeah, it's been done. <laughs> <laughs> but what, why, why do you think he's divorcing Jerry? He's quitting his job. What is he busy mm-hmm. with? He's, busting, <laughs> he's planning something. I'm I'm not feeling safe right now. He's planning. Mm-hmm. I swear to God, next week you hear Rupert Murdoch opens newspaper on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> trying to influence galactic <laughs> elections. but yeah but the the good boy man the good boy got owned though did you hear uh, the J- james the good boy the you know the uh liberal one he got owned. lachlan is the uh more conservative one sort of the bad boy oh it's I like see. in success yeah in succession if yeah, a no, roman I- I one, lost basically. track of his sons on a few years ago. I knew, yeah, and I knew they had like, yeah, yeah, basically. But no, uh, yeah. so so the more what the more conservative one got this job. Yeah, yeah. Basically, he sold most of his company to the Swedish guy, and he kept <laughs> the news part and gave that to his son. So, okay, well, Matt, gave he... gave him, but he's like. I'll keep the keys for now, though. It's yeah, yours. It's yours. It's yours, but, but the deed is under my name. <laughs> no, the deed is under actually the kid's name for some reason. Listen, listen, you but can have my debit card. You can have my debit card, but I will get the SMS if you yeah. spend. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you if you spend too much, and I will I need it. Explanation. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh god damn it man can you imagine you're like 55 years old and it's just like your dad is still like you know <laughs> the debit card situation <laughs> uh, poor Lachla too funny um... but yeah I- I'm looking forward to his future galactic adventures whatever wherever they may be wherever they may take it <laughs> And oh, last okay. but not least for this segment, there was this video, which I actually have not seen. I, oh, the alien? No, or, no, or the Nazis. Nazis. No, no. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, <laughs> play a bit. You'll uh, just play the part that is the video, not the hill parts, because then you get it pretty much. No context needed? Uh, the, we'll, I'll give you the context after. So the title of the video is Nazi receives standing ovation at Zelensky visit with Trudeau. Canadian parliamentarian apologizes. Okay. Tonka as a Canadian Ukrainian war hero. We have here in the chamber today Ukrainian Canadians, Ukrainian Canadian world veteran from the Second World War who fought the Ukrainian independence against the Russians and continues to support the troops today even at his age of 98. Why is he struggling so much?
His name is Yaroslav Hunka. He's a Ukrainian hero, a Canadian hero, and we thank him for all his service. Thank you. As you can see in the clip, Rhoda's words received a lengthy applause and lots of waving from the floor, including from Zelensky and Canadian Prime Minister, Minister Justin Trudeau. Yesterday, Jewish groups condemned the honoring of Hunka, saying he had been a member of the Waffen SS unit, which was comprised of Ukrainians, according to the Washington Post. Heinrich Himmler, who was a leading member of the Nazi Party in Germany, formed the Waffen SS. The group was involved with. So, so what? Yeah. So I love the fact that, you know, it wasn't like he came to Canada and he fought for some bullshit Canadian war against the poor indigenous Canadians or something. It wasn't like he did something there as well. It was because of his activities during World War II that they were applauding him right there. Because, <laughs> I mean, these people are that is stupid and, and not for that Canada. uneducated. And and that uneducated that they they said in World War II he fought for Ukrainian independence against the Russians. Are are you stupid? <laughs> like, do you not know the basics of World War II? Like, I mean, it's just you have to be beyond uneducated to really like not like read out. He was fighting on. Well, the maybe side that's of why Ukraine. he was struggling so much. <laughs> Reading maybe, that. Uh, out. Uh, they gave him 10 seconds before he went on. Like, Read this, okay? We have a guy. We have a guy. We need him to be. I, I mean, it's unbelievable, man. This is unbelievable. And, you know, like, it, it's just, yeah, just genuine SS. Like, you know, and most, I believe most of the Jews that were killed in World War II were in, like, Poland and Ukraine. Yeah. So, you know, that's just, yeah. Well done. There. No, well you're done right. There. I didn't even. <laughs> I wasn't even thinking of that. That like, yeah, if in, if in World War Two, <laughs> you're fighting the, the Russians, then you are <laughs> there's, uh, on the side of one answer. <laughs> no. <laughs> World War Two guys, not yeah. one, yeah. two, two. All right, <laughs> you are on the side of Nazi. <laughs> but you know, it's just unbelievable like they don't even like, basic, that's so true. you like, can literally use like reason to just, <laughs> to reach this. just spend 10 seconds before saying a sentence out loud just try to digest it it's unbelievable and I just can't believe like things get you know it's like the again the talk we had a year ago two years ago with Jared Bauer when we were talking about Hollywood I just can't believe things can get this far up and there is no like a minder, like deep state doesn't have. That's why, unlike most people, I don't think the problem with the word is the deep state. The problem with the word is the lack of the deep state. <laughs> There's nobody's like doing basic goddamn like checks and balances, you know? Like there is nobody with a checklist. Okay, guys, we need a Ukrainian that has no relations to Nazis, okay? <laughs> If we could please just one Ukrainian <laughs> with no Nazi connections, please, guy. Yeah. Anyways, but what truly shocking, and this one really went viral. BBC, everybody covered it. So, alrighty, Sam. So let's continue. This story was hilarious. I was just dying from beginning to end of this um video. So the Hill video. Dave Portnoy uh, mm -hmm. uh, confronted confronts Washington Post reporter over Pizza Fest hit piece. So Dave Portnoy is the is the owner and founder of Barstool. They're, I would call it their media company. I would say they do podcasts, they do sports podcasts, and lifestyle podcasts. And the CEO, founder, whatever Dave Portnoy, he's quite famous. And he has this thing that he does pretty much, which is he goes around the U.S. and he tries like one bite of a slice of pizza and then he rates it. And then he just does that all the time. All I always see his videos doing that. You and I it? guess he was also having some kind of he was holding some kind of bigger pizza event or, <laughs> or some kind <laughs> of event that involved pizza or pizza companies. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And then the hit piece comes from The Washington Post that we'll talk about. But yeah, sorry. <laughs> No, let's play the video. I just, yeah, no. I, no, you were going to ask me a question, I feel. Is he, what is his connection to pizza? It seems unhealthy. 
<laughs> listen it's a, it's a great content it's great content going around restaurants and having bite of pizza and rating them what makes him the expert in the pizza like it I mean, doesn't I it doesn't you don't need to be an thing. no don't. you need to be an expert he's not a sports expert whatsoever Internet. he's no, a man, media he's... expert if anything he is He has a media company. I blame I blame internet for this that you don't need to be expert to talk about. Ah, Jesus Christ! So what the fuck's a pizza expert anyway? Need an Italian shit. guy. <laughs> I need a fat Italian to go around America. <laughs> not a not a Jewish guy. He explains in Italian Boston. like, okay, we think it's good. <laughs> He, he he's That's doing this. Switch, eh? <laughs> he's doing this. And oh boy, is this lady annoying! But let's let's listen to this hilarious phone call between Dave Portnoy and the Washington. It was hilarious, like, and and we are bear, bearing the lead because yeah. all of this aside, the best part is the conversation. Let's play. The conversation. It seems like you're sending. We have this pizza fest happening on Saturday, and you're pizza reaching fest, out to our advertisers. Moment. And you're basically sending an email that says to the effect, Dave's a misogenic racist. Do you want to defend yourselves advertising at this event, right? I'm sorry. What's your name, Dave? I'm sorry. Who are you? I'm the guy you're writing the article about, Dave Portnoy. Oh, you're Dave Portnoy. Oh, hey, how are you? Good. Good. No, I'm not. I'm not I haven't said anything like that. I'm well, I, I, can, I can read if you want. If you want, I can read what you actually sent. I have it. Yeah, yeah, read because I, I sent a bunch of notes. So I want to. I sure don't do one. that. Dave. Okay. Uh, we are planning to write about the festival yeah. and how and how some of the sponsors and participants have drawn criticism by seemingly to associate themselves with Dave Portnoy, who has a history of misogynic comments and other problematic behavior. I want to make sure that Blank had a chance to respond to this, since the company is the most prominent and their partners of his festival. Oh, that's the one I sent to which was definitely the most pointed of them because I really did want them to respond. All right, we've got to listen to a little bit more of that call. Do you think that's fair? Like, I, I totally disagree with the oh. assertions of what you said, that misogenic and all that stuff. So, like, it kind of backs people into a corner. So I'm happy to go over anything. I mean, you have, that is pretty pointed. You said you didn't do it. Then I have the exact evidence of you doing it. So no, I didn't say I didn't do that. I said I did. That was the one that was the most. Pointed. Well, no, you, you that went before I before I provided proof. You said you didn't really remember doing that. And then I read it to you and you're like, oh, yeah, I did it that one time. So you did do it. Um, I'm happy to talk about the comments because to me, it's kind of like torturous interference. Like we're doing an event. Everyone's happy about the event. Uh, you know, I've raised 50 million for small business. I've helped pizza. None of that. It's Dave is misogenic and problematic. And I'm happy to talk about it because to me, nobody would like if someone's going around sending that email to their sponsors. And again, you're not like questioning. You're, you're, it's almost like a statement of fact. Kind of iconic, honestly. He destroyed her though. He destroyed her. He destroyed her. But she's an idiot. She should have said, I didn't write this. I've never written this. Misogenic in my life. I don't know what you mean. By I mean, I would have honestly been like, wait, what's mis I misogenic? No, I, I don't. Never. I have never accused you of being misogenic or whatever the hell you're talking about. <laughs> but they've never volunteered to read. Clearly, it's out of your, like, you know, skill set zone. So never. I mean, he, he did own, you did own her there. But it was yeah. just so. Like, let me read this. So you accused, you crepitatized me for being a misopanic <laughs> <laughs> April. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you reading? <laughs> it was too good. Was, no, but, but then. He was a bit angry, so I felt, but he seems, even though I don't like him, you remember he was on Joe Rogan talking about, and uh, like, and uh, after that, he tweeted about the. A, a student, black a student basketball player, and how she's out of order or something. Uh, he, but I don't think like he seems like you know one of those really empty nice guys. Like you know what I mean? Like, like I don't think his ideas are good. Maybe politically, but he seems like just he's like not the most politically or social. Like he, it, 
you know what I mean? Like he seems just like a very dumb, nice guy. If that makes any sense, no. I mean, he's pretty successful in what he does, but I mean, I another, would say he's another a dumb evidence guy. for another evidence for be, him being dumb, man. No, no, I'm, 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 I truly believe that. Uh, I wouldn't say the cat. He's not, the like, he doesn't come years. off like that, but yeah. He comes off as a very uh, hi guys, Joe. What yeah, he doing? is like that, What's of course. Going? What's up? Oh. Yeah, but not, you know, not, yeah, not misogynic for sure. Not misogynic. <laughs> yeah, misogynic. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Definitely not misogynic. Long guys <laughs> not accuse them of being misogynic, <laughs> but honestly, just like how he owned the journalist, she owned her as well because. Oh, oh yeah, boy. yeah, yeah. She's like, yeah, he is a misogynist woman hater racist, and she's like, where did you see that? Um, well, first of all, I'm both what's black a misog- and the woman. <laughs> what's we were talking about mis- misogyny? <laughs> so it's not okay, no, misogyny. they okay, no, they talk. I was like, <laughs> I would love to hear the part where she says that. I mean, it's so bad. Oh, it's towards the end. It's uh, no, it's from early... middle play from. Oh, the part she owns her, the conservative part oh, owns her. She again. owns her non stuff. Paints him in a negative light. He's oh, mad yeah. that there were calls to, or there were emails to uh, sponsors that also pointed him in the light that many people already see him in, but whatever. Um, <laughs> It was it was an interesting back and forth exchange. I think that he recorded it and it went live for for the reasons that he did. He wanted to you know stir the pot on media and, and media's aggression, but that's their job. It's to investigate. It's to talk about things that are in some cases already in the know, but to dig a little bit deeper. She didn't have to take the call. She didn't have to continue answering his questions. I found that part interesting because at any given point she could have cut that conversation off. She was doing her job as a journalist, um, and you know sometimes you there are going to be stories that come out that you. Agree with. That just is what it is. She's, yeah, she's I just think horrible. my problem here is that she is approaching her what she calls an investigation with the premise that he is misogynistic. And some people might agree with that characterization of things that he said, but I don't think it's the job of the reporter to do what is essentially an activist piece, right? Because when you're reaching out to sponsors <laughs> and Yeah, I mean that was just a horrible take. Oh yeah, I, I mean uh, it wasn't a take, man. No, it I mean, was made up play, also play. some facts. <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. also my imagination. Yeah. What interesting back and take. forth. She could have just hung up whenever she wanted. You know how stupid and bad she would look? I mean, of she course she could. She could have accused could. him of sexual assault. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> sure, but I mean, I don't think that would be to her advantage. <laughs> <laughs> she could have called him a piece of shit. <laughs> that wouldn't no, help but, either. That's that. <laughs> it was, yeah, it wasn't the take. She spends. I mean, p- play a bit more after this. I think she spends this like seven minutes, whatever. She just comes up with different, just weird, just ways of s- describing the situation without describing the situation, like. You know, like there was, she did her job as a journalist. She answered the phone calls. I, a lot of people don't answer their phone calls. <laughs> a lot of people screen their calls these days. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it sounds like it's getting Could personal. have let it go to voicemail. Yeah. <laughs> Could have let it go to <laughs> Okay, all right. <laughs> just, yeah. Nothing we are talking about. Was she like, was she telling the truth or? <laughs> Or... No, that is that's different. <laughs> she could have been in the bathroom. We you know when he she called. She could have been in the bathroom, but she did her job as a journalist. She answered the call, and it was interesting. And he did what he wanted. He did what he wanted, which is a stir the pot of the pizza. It's a deep dish pizza. It's got a pot and everything. It's deep dish, and he stirred the deep dish. Like what are you talking about, lady? Have you met the man? He could, he could barely read. He could, he could barely say misogynist. And he's like a native speaker of English. He's saying misogyny. <laughs> oh, God. And it's it. not like he couldn't have not known that word because, you know, I'm sure he's been accused of that a lot. Being like you oh, know, yeah, the yeah, owner yeah, of yeah. Barstool for like 13 I, years. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. They, they talk about he you has You don't need to read books to come across. The week. <laughs> yeah. so I think, yeah. I think he's yeah he's here. He must have. What if he's <laughs> only read it so far, like in comments, <laughs> and for some reason he never. Heard. Oh yeah, I would imagine it's been shouted at him numerous times. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's why. So... He, yeah, yeah. 
so. But yeah, it's good to I like there, whenever there is videos like this. There was the one with uh, you remember with Trump and oranges. He was talking about COVID oranges. You no. wanted to say COVID origins, I think. No. Said, COVID oranges. Or something. And this <laughs> is good. I always sh yeah show them to my students, and I'm like, see guys, this is <laughs> those Iranians are obsessed with correct pronunciation, oh. and I'm like. Just get it out. Nobody cares. <laughs> Just, nobody's listening. <laughs> Just say misogyny. Just say misogyny. Let's move on. You know? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, let's just watch a few more seconds of this and then move on. Oh, yeah. First let's and see foremost, the that... Um, that they or they have seen some of his misogynistic and I would argue actually very racist commentary as well. Um, and I think she was elevating that as important to people who may not have been digging into his digging into some of his podcasts, some of his printed materials and other things that are clearly available and evident across the Internet and have been for quite some time at this point. Um, it's. I think that her approach was interesting. Um, in many cases, you would elevate this as someone who is pitching a story, not someone who's trying to gather information for a story. But I also feel as though she she felt that it was important to put these um, to put these potential sponsors or sponsors on notice that hey, you're supporting someone who, for these reasons, is a problem. Now that also presupposes that they don't know that he has been <laughs> problematic to a, a lot of circles. Um, what? what is she saying <laughs> so much that is really like? Stop there. <laughs> She's why sad. why is she on such a such crazy rant and just like just you know, she, saying you know she, everything and anything? Because she knows like that's I think to be honest, so I sent you a message, I think, after I sent you this video that the black girl didn't know what she walked into. <laughs> I think she thought I'm going to the hill, I do a couple of news stories, you know, I slowly I'm working my my way up to MSNBC, to The View, whatever, you know. And then they put this on. <laughs> and she's like, okay, I have to now, I have to take this side. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know how to defend this situation, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> so I think, yeah, I think she was put on a spot because yeah. she did not expect the freedom of her speech. I think the heel, sometimes with the guest host, is a bit of a sort of a, you know, they don't know what's going on because yeah. it's got the veneer of uh, establishment media, but inside, at its core, is nothing but the uh, mm -hmm. internet whore. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the deal is. <laughs> She's just talking so much nonsense. I listen to this. Um, particularly, oh, yeah. minority circles have called out Dave, Dave Portnoy for quite some time now. Uh, civil rights circles have called him out for quite some time now. There is some legitimacy Who to the fact that about? red flags have been waved about him being misogynistic and having some very strong racial undertones. And I think that that is a very important thing to note. However, um, this this whole phone exchange, I'm not necessarily comfortable with just because of the level at which I, I think that it puts people who are trying to do the job. And we may disagree on what journalism is at this point, trying to do the job of investigating, finding out, finding out yeah. something, but also elevating it to the point of writing a story. It may not be a story that you agree with. It may not be a story that the the person who is the target. Of I can't yeah, anymore. She's, she's just saying great. everything she knows in all of humanity and life. She's like, it's, let me just is, put it all out there. This is everything I know, every single no, word. No, in However, yet no assumes presumes sky where ain't when <laughs> <laughs> i've read the <laughs> no he this is what we in debate we call uh, um um uh, what uh, sorry uh, vocabulary blitzkrieg <laughs> in which you try to just by saying so many words so many times so fast yeah the other person just going y yeah, yeah yeah you're right whatever yeah yeah whatever let's move on so i think that's what she was trying to do basically trying to insane. cause confusion but yeah she goes on to say that as a woman and a black person <laughs> so she pulls up both yeah the cards um and but yeah i mean in this situation i think the conservative girl did a good job just let them talk yeah. and destroy themselves and she did a great job of but i would say she's very attractive man i'm just I don't know. After I hearing that, I don't see it, no. In person, I would be inclined to agree. <laughs> I would be like, sure, 
Dave Portnoy is an asshole. What is what else? What else do you mean to be this? Misogynist, civil rights activist, and Black Panther, <laughs> Angela Black Davis. Great, you just start uh, naming the, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> political <laughs> figures. Martin Luther King. Well, <laughs> Defund the police. <laughs> yeah. Or no, no, not <laughs> don't defund. I don't know. Where <laughs> what is your <laughs> black police officers? Um, <laughs> a good uh, black middle class. <laughs> Tulsa massacre. I know about <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Yeah, you should use your own strategy against it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just um, you have to sleep with me now. I know <laughs> about black history. <laughs> I am aware of black history. You have to sleep with me. <laughs> it's too oh, funny. God, uh, yeah, but yeah, not a great day for yeah, uh, anti and for not a great day for misogyny or yeah. anti misogyny they all lost that <laughs> man but listen before we get into this ufo video and okay yeah before it's we get be into amazing. this ufo video by the hill i mean they're really doing this on purpose why are they, why are they using the exact they never do that for any other story why do they, they keep on using the exact same thumbnail oh um thumbnail that's a good question because they even cha- they repost the same video but with yeah, a different thumbnail. That's insane too. But yeah, anyway. I think I don't know that the, the, in that picture his eyes, man. The David Grush's eyes in that picture is just so, just like it looks like somebody who's actually mm-hmm. seen an alien, and his eyes stayed like in that same situation forever. It's just like it's just popping out. I think maybe I, I no idea. Maybe it, they don't want to jinx it. It got them a lot of clicks the first time or something. Yeah, but... you always ask me like organizational questions. <laughs> I don't know, like I don't have access to their internal emails. Why do you think they are using this title? Can you put Why me are in touch they with anybody? <laughs> Why are they capitalizing secretly? Do you think that adds to the clicks or what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I think maybe one good approach to this video is just to watch Bree give the news in the beginning, or. Yeah, yeah, and w- watch a bit of the guy Schellenberger talk, and then let Brie ask her first question. It's a really good question nice. she asks. It's genuinely fun. It's really beautiful. Good. UFO whistleblower David Grush seems to have started a domino effect since Grush gave testimony to Congress in August about crashed spacecraft and quote non-human biologics. At least 30 Biologic. other whistleblowers working for the federal government or government Ooh, contractors have given testimony to the Office of the Intelligence Community Inspector General, according to sources interviewed by public. Despite the growing number of whistleblowers, the intelligence community is still fighting disclosure, according to Public Inspector General of the Intelligence Community, Thomas A. Monhelm, said that his office has not conducted any audit, inspection, and evaluation or review of alleged UAP programs within responsibility authority of the DNI that would enable a fulsome response. Author of the public substack, Michael Schellenberger, joins us now to discuss. Michael, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So, Michael, you know, this is garnering a lot of attention. We're hearing from more and more whistleblowers. Do you think this is going to lead uh, for the government, the Pentagon in particular, to be more transparent on what they actually do know and how long they've maintained this information in private? Well, I certainly hope so. I think that's the really big question. I mean, I think what's important to point out here is that, you know, right after Grush's testimony in July, A lot of people said, you know, he's one guy, um, he's relying on secondhand information. He hasn't actually touched any uh, uh, exotic materials or spacecraft. Um, But now we have uh, reports from multiple sources, including people that have had direct contact with these programs, uh, telling us that indeed many of Russia's claims were accurate. Uh, including about the the retrieved uh, retrieved craft around reverse engineering programs. Um, You know, I would say there's still multiple possibilities here. I uh, am agnostic myself. I do not know uh, what is going on. (laughs) There is a possibility, for example, that this is a kind of social contagion, a kind of uh, effect of human unconscious that particularly impacts uh, military intelligence folks. It's not inconceivable. The thing that's so strange, though, about Mm -hmm. it is this intense level of secrecy 
which has actually increased in recent months. So it didn't even make it into the piece, but you know, they've been denying more freedom of information <laughs> requests uh, to the federal government, to the main. They, they realize like half of their agents are psychos. So they're like, <laughs> okay, we need to clean this shit. And I'm like, these guys are, <laughs> half of them believe in extraterrestrial. So before we <laughs> play more, so the 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 story now is, even more people have come out claiming there are aliens or they've touched aliens again without not even have <laughs> nothing. The not even story. like a black and white, I don't know, photo or drawing or like... No, know. no, that's... Okay, okay, play the video because then yeah. we can come back to your question. So play, play. The person that agree. requested a guy named John Greenwald, uh, you know that after the... T during the hearing, Grush said, I'll tell you where these... Uh, uh, retrieved craft are at specific bases or military contractors they would not let him have a skiff or a kind of secure compartmentalized facility um and then now when we you know our sources tell us and some of them were uh in the piece um actually on the record we're saying that we're seeing both the defense secretary and others start to kind of uh close up and try to and try to basically oppose an amendment uh proposed by senate uh majority leader Chuck Schumer, which would require that the contractors and others with any potential crashed materials return them. So, you know, if it's a social contagion, if it's something, or if it's just a, even if it's just a, a Defense Department weapons program, there is supposed to be congressional oversight of secret weapons programs. So the level of secrecy um, that we're seeing, I think is really um, unusual and concerning, um, include, especially or including if it's just a social contagion. Michael, can you tell us a little bit more about how we know that there are these 30 additional whistleblowers and what, if anything, we know about who they are, where they work, what kind of security access they have and what they might have been privy to and potentially even the nature of what they've been disclosing? Sure, and I should say that I don't have a firm count and really what we're able to say are dozens. Uh, these are all individuals Pause. in the government that are, or, or working for military contracts. Wait, it, are they so, not even whistleblowers so, anymore? Is even that no, part no, now becoming debatable? No, no, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, no, these no. people may so, or may not exist. <laughs> so Bree, Bree asks him, okay, you just made all these uh, claims and you wrote the article and all that. Are there anything are there like any can we confirm they where they worked where they like in government where they in private sector are they human what can we confirm anything about any of them about anything and he's like listen and you said 30 that's an exaggeration <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's let's go down let's let's first of all let me backtrack from <laughs> some of the claims already let me just retreat a little from my original position <laughs> and now yeah. let me and man if you play a bit more he brings up oh people say this is just a distraction from a hunter by their story this guy is such a weasel. Like, this oh, guy might was... be the most evil person we've ever covered. He knows exactly, like, what he's doing, like, in terms of, like, just, you know, completely He's ruining selling... alien stories. And I think I just found that with oh, alien yeah. stories, you either go all out. Or fun. Or... Exactly. <laughs> or you don't... Go what is he now? He's... <laughs> Oh, the public needs to know why there is level of seats. He's the same asshole who yeah. did the Twitter files with Matt Taibbi, oh. and you know he's he's the smart. He was he knew what he was getting into, unlike Matt Taibbi. You know, like he knew exactly what he was doing, and he stayed until the end. He kept his contact with Elon. So, but this one is really ridiculous, man. He they're just like basically bunch of guys told me there are aliens guys <laughs> it's like literally there this is the story this is this they said something bunch of guys in the government said they believe in aliens <laughs> <laughs> they touch their poo <laughs> 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 <It's> like, <laughs> god damn you <laughs> anyway yeah so i thought you would enjoy this no there are over dozens camera does no, the, the, yeah, no, these ones pissing me off now. <laughs> <laughs> the story yeah. has regressed badly. Yeah, this guy is. I mean, now the debate has moved on fun. to <laughs> whether or not the actual humans exist before we <laughs> even get to the alien part. 
do we have a government? Here? Oh, maybe it's a trick. <laughs> Guys, investigation ah. is taking us backwards. But uh, but he's <laughs> just so you know that throwing that Hunter Biden thing there, uh, just completely like you know, oh no, this is not a distraction from real stories, but paying lip service to the exact psychos that you know, conspiratorial and. Very, I mean, in a way, a smart guy. Good for you, man. Actually, rip these motherfuckers off. They deserve it. <clears throat> Fair enough. Oh, oh, oh. Now we're getting to the... <laughs> Controversial waters now. <laughs> Truth Where do you stand? Pervert? Tell me now. Uh, 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 pervert. <laughs> 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 shit, shit, I made the wrong trip. <laughs> oh, 20 subscribers. <laughs> Man, the Dressel branding is too funny. I mean, look, all I'm I just was that like a shock to anybody that <laughs> he was like a pervert? Like he was like the most no, why did obvious people, case of a wait, pervert. I'm most confused about Chris this. Delia. Why are people acting like Russell Brand like hit the stage two years ago? And like six months ago, he started talking politics. It's like, you know, it's as if they've just discovered about Russell Brand and, you know, how he was in Hollywood and then everything. And you don't get that feeling in the takes? Not, no, no. I don't get the feeling of they recently discovered him. I get a feeling that they, they've they made, made up a mythology just mm. like in the last month or so. That there was Russell Brand was a, like a Hollywood icon, yeah. and then there was this like he turned his back according to his fans and according to his enemies, he was kicked out of Hollywood. It's just like, yeah, but like all of, of that as if exactly of, it was they've created like, was that like third rate, and that just happened also because now they're coming <laughs> after him. Whereas like that's yeah, the thing, the mythology all of this yeah, mythology, all new. of this happened before, right? He was an actor, what? 2005 Five to, to 15, 15 types, okay yeah. i think and, so and I, like... he became political <laughs> like 2012 he started discovering or, politics no. 2011 12 i'm sure but, about that but he went like yeah but but he went full like crazy political 2016 onwards mm, like no you know, really... because already by 2013 no he was like a lefty um, you know, he had become a lefty and he criticized the government <coughs> from the left. Um, sure, and all but this. that was and like he, really And cool. then, no, no, but then, yeah, then it got deeper and deeper. And then I, I would argue, yeah, there was an additional then move towards more like freedom of speech and I guess COVID and all that. Yeah, I mean, I got us like, I don't know if the allegations, I think personally the allegations are true. I would like the level of allegations the number of them mm. you know and the people have been saying it for so many years way before he even turned right wing so i'm inclined to believe it and i must say man i'm just so glad because i always thought he's the unfunniest comedian like british comedian <laughs> i've told you this he's a british i mean i am so surprised by such a great analogy i made between him and joe rogan Except oh. the sexual stuff, but like, did you? I forgot he was yeah. the host of Big Brother. He he came through reality TV too. He was like a unfunny comedian who is not you know funny for a stand up. So they bring him to reality show just to you know have some. Yeah, no, cracks. no. I mean, you're right, and I mean, yeah. I guess Joe Rogan wasn't a movie guy, but yeah, he was a TV show guy. And fear he factor. Did, yeah, fear reality factor. Show. And of course, then the podcast and where they stand in society. I mean, except yeah, in many ways they no, are very both similar. Of them are and he's both like hippies and yeah. also well, cool just... guys. <clears throat> but in Britain, it's not cool to be, you know, uh, yeah. uh, built. So it's cool to be a rocker yeah. or whatever the weird thing he was, punk rocker or whatever. So, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I just I always found him to be the most <clears throat> annoying presence on every. Uh, like you know, I watch a lot of British quiz shows. Yeah. Like, and he's the most oh. annoying, unfunny. I hate a spiritual people in general. If you're a spiritual and into metal and this kind of hair, and I goddamn hate you. So <laughs> he was just everything I hate. 
Uh, I can't say too I'm funny. Too but yeah, but and no, then so you, and now they're actually no, Yeah, go sorry, ahead. No, I was gonna say now they're his... investigating him and all that. Oh yeah, BBC has actually like asserted the No BBC. Like... <laughs> no. No, the sorry, police. yeah, London yeah. police. <laughs> London <laughs> Metro. BBC to me you is You live the in Jenks world where <laughs> even the police is the media. <laughs> no, <laughs> Everything's no, just media. Where'd you get your food? Media. I know your food. Oh, yes, BBC. CNN. Jenk. No, <laughs> Snap out. <laughs> <laughs> <It's so cool. laughs> Jenk. 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 Okay. Oh, sorry, sorry. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's an animal you can use. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, <I'll> give you that. <laughs> no, I, sorry, sorry London Met Police. <laughs> I don't know what I was saying. Oh, okay. but, uh, but yeah, the police has started a real investigation on him. And no, I mean, um, to be honest, I, I genuinely think he will probably, I mean, I'm pretty sure he did. Do, I mean, I guess he did those things. I also think. Um, yeah, probably they like went after him because you know he's been extremely annoying. And imagine a lot of people who are you know journalists, right? You know what I mean? Like they oh, don't okay. like I'm what he says now. So I guess that's the only thing. The other thing I want to because discuss. they keep saying censorship. And by the way, demonetization is not censorship. Fuck off! Like you don't own. Nobody owns money to you for yeah. your idiotic opinions, especially a hippie piece of shit like him, pervert. Sorry, go ahead. But yeah, um shit. Uh about the censorship? <laughs> no, no, not the censorship. Uh the other thing. Yeah, uh, censorship, um, I agree. Uh no, the other thing. Oh that two things can be true at the same time. No, oh my god, never mind. Oh sorry. I I yeah. I don't want to be dead or otherwise I would let you <laughs> think <laughs> for a couple of minutes. <laughs> you know. <laughs> be quiet <laughs> but um yeah i mean just I, again I, I yeah i still think timing probably it has something oh. to do with the fact that they don't <laughs> like him anymore okay that reminds me okay it, it all came back but the timing nice. thing again this goes back to the point why i was saying that before he's been that you know he's been anti-media and like you know not part of the mainstream for like pretty much a decade or, you know, even like towards the tail end of his career. And sure, then he kept on doing a few movies. They tried with him. It didn't work. But that always existed. And I don't think it's so much maybe the case that they're, they're like, okay, let's come after him and all this. It's also probably like nobody wants will come to his defense. So if there are some things there, they can easily blow up and people would jump on it. I mean, they wouldn't like him. But, I mean, maybe those two things are really the same. I'm just I would say, slightly though, differently. A... But that's the other thing I was saying. It, that argument, exactly. It makes it seem like just recently he changed as a person, which is not true. I would find, give that he went more from a left to a right kind of switch, perhaps, in the last three years, you could say. But that's not that's a... going leaving mainstream. He had left mainstream... I would say eight. No, to man, 10 but years don't. Ago. I mean, come on, don't. You see, you're very pretending you're mainstream a lot. You're putting a lot of mainstream. You're you sound well, like Brie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think it's. Let's not pretend left criticizing mainstream like John Stewart criticizing no. mainstream. It's not the same as. No, Al, but you he know was independent. He had his own YouTube channel, and he didn't like. He's been saying bad stuff about Hollywood. For like eight to ten years, that's not new. No, but not this bad stuff. There really, is, there are different kinds of bad stuff you can. Maybe say. okay, yeah, okay, okay yeah. like, to that level like, of detail, know, I don't know what he's exact. No, what I'm he's just been... saying like it's cool to make fun of bankers, for example, but it's not cool to make fun of scientists with this. I'm just, you know, what I'm saying, like they. Yes, but I'm, I'm saying he, he's uh, been liberal. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're right. He was outside of the mainstream and maybe he's went like he passed the threshold that's what i'm saying you know there's a threshold that yeah. you pass and then they fucking hate you and i think because he interviewed you know Repo like if you support republicans basically they hate you but not that but by again, the way, is it not that... true that the case goes back to 2019 but it was put oh, on yeah. pause because of the... covid 
the yes the, yeah. i i don't know about the post covid thing but no the, some of the cases are older some of the claims against them are even older than that but, but they yeah. had been opened and charged like it's just now yeah. yeah it's just resuming now and it's getting media attention yeah i mean i guess you could argue especially the media attention yeah. is especially the timing is yeah. a bit odd but then again i mean I, i'm like that's why i, I think kind of multipolarity would hopefully be better that than a unipolar moment mm. in the global politics it's good there are different assholes checking each other i'm <laughs> glad <laughs> like you know yeah. like you know like it's not a bad idea or there are different groups checking on each other who's done who raped who <laughs> <laughs> um you know it's kind of reminds reminded me of the french guy you remember him the sarkozy rival what was he? The IMF guy. Oh, no. Uh, the guy in New York, he was uh, he apparently tried to rape a maid or something. Oh, uh, that rings IMF? a bell, but... Uh, God damn. What we, he had a good French name. He had a very yeah. uh, French... Language. Yeah, he essentially stopped acting in 2013. He's done. He did the. He was on Death of Nile, which I was very shocked by. Oh, he did one or two things per year. No, go up, go up, go up. No, he did Death yeah. of Nile last year. Yeah. Twenty. I was well, relative. I mean, he didn't do well. And yeah. Minions. That's big. But then again, he's a tiny side character. In yeah. That. That's probably Minions. His role in Minions is his best role, by the way. Like by. And all of this, he did one episode. So yeah. He did neighbors? Really? Okay. One <clears> episode. <throat> Maybe no, even I'm just, I did an episode. Yeah. I'm not even. I don't even know. Neighbor, it's been going on for quite a long time. It's possible. <laughs> Probably when we were kids, we did episode, but don't. Yeah, but yeah, he's no. He's a. I mean. If there is any silver lining to his censorship, it's <laughs> that we probably hopefully see less and less of him. So that would be good. That's that's. Yeah. I hope so. Please God. But even back in the and, day, he was he did, never made. Yeah, I guess, well, he was making bigger movies. No, in UK, he was really big, man. In UK, for a while, he was so fucking big for no... I mean, goddamn, yeah. Big Brother days and all that. Forgetting Sarah Marshall. That's probably the only movie I've seen with him. Oh, yeah. This and uh, Get Him to Greek. Probably best movies with him in them. This is Uh, much better. (laughs) He plays himself. Have you seen Get Him to Greek? No, probably. No, it's good. It's this. It's a sort of a spin-off of this, basically. The same. He plays the same character as <laughs> Forgetting Sarah Marshall, and um, Jonah Hill plays the same character too. He's, Lord. He, he be, yeah. It's, Jason it's Segel, okay. you mean? But no, no, no. Jonah Hill, oh. the guy who is his waiter and he's in love with his music. They have like it's like a spin-off. It's not a oh. sequel. It's like they go on their own separate ah, adventure. Think... Yeah. Oh, okay. It's... Eh. Oh, eh. now I might watch. Yeah, they, no, he, <laughs> he he has to get him to the Greek st- stadium or uh, hall concert hall, That's like, funny. and he's like does drugs and crazy, like he plays himself. Yeah. Not that. Oh. By the way, again, I I still don't think they should take away his YouTube stuff and everything, the De- demonetization, whatever. But like, I think even criminals deserve to have YouTube channels. So you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, but the thing is, he's not even a criminal yet. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he's even. I said even. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. He's, yeah, like I don't think they should be able you have to, to wait. just you nationalize. Might be engaged, this. but until you're not married, you're not married. Okay, there's no. <laughs> <laughs> no means no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but okay. All right. But talking of Schwanfreuder and shitty comedians being exposed. Go to Hassan. God. Oh, sorry. I made a spelling mistake there. It should be phony Hassan, oh. <laughs> but it says funy Hassan. So <laughs> that's dyslexia, guys. That's oh, dyslexia. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I have evidence, unlike this <laughs> asshole. Uh, yeah. So it turned out most of uh, Mehdi, not Mehdi Hassan. Uh, d- yeah. There are so many asshole Hassans out there. Seriously, <laughs> three I, I can think of. <laughs> there is Hassanabi. Hassan Piker, there's Mehdi Hassan, and there's this guy who is, I forget, what is Hassan Minaj. So he turned out 
most of the stories he said about the oh, Islamophobia he faced in America. Oh, Muslims, they are so... It was all bullshit, <laughs> including a bullshit story about the anthrax, uh, which I don't know about that one, but there's another yeah. bullshit story about him and a girl not dating him because um, um, the family is like anti-Muslim. I mean, Jesus Christ, I... Yeah, what I, thought, I used to think he was Canadian. Yeah, I thought he was Canadian. No, no, born in California. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, I thought. I don't know why. Yeah, I assume I born in California. Hey, is he a valley but, boy? <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. Yeah. So here we have the hill version of it. But you had sent me the also the breaking points version, and oh, yeah. oh it's Sager. Was happy to go to work on that day. <laughs> oh, is that, yeah, Sager does not like. Oh, he uh, showed up imagine. early on that day. He's like, okay, guys, uh, no, let's just record this one first and get it up. <laughs> then we can do the rest of the show. <laughs> so, extra time my good this. friend Hassan Minaj, who I Maybe respect. We can bring it up, search uh, it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no ill towards him, but it, he's a rapist. There was some. <laughs> He's a rapist. <laughs> well, yeah, not really, some... but you know, uh, pretty much as bad. <laughs> but he's a lying piece of shit. <laughs> no, he. Uh, yeah, he, it's very short. Actually, say... in the beginning, he gets right. He prepared a monologue. He pushed Crystal away. He's like, yes. you know, <laughs> Crystal, guys, move. <laughs> just on me. <laughs> I shut up about these strikers. Okay, shut the fuck up. I need to talk about this. <laughs> this is important stuff. <laughs> no, there was yeah some. Play this, Hilarious. yeah. It was yeah listen to this disclaimer very, at first. Really, really. dark uh, <laughs> Indian on Indian violence. <laughs> I want to start out by saying I've got nothing personal against Hassan Minaj. If anything, I actually owe him. Once, despite eh. the fact that I had never met him, I sent him an email saying that my sister was coming to his show. He personally insisted on greeting her and her friends backstage, which of course made me cool in her eyes for five milliseconds. The point, though, is that he's a nice guy and even nice to me, despite vast political differences and because I want people to know this is well, not out of malice possible. at all. Instead, it's to dwell on the area where I've always differed most from Hassan. Much of his political orientation and comedy focuses in on what I would say are the worst parts of America. It is rooted, I believe, in probably what was a genuinely traumatic experience that many Indian Americans like me had to go through post 9-11. We went, at least in our eyes, from a genuinely post-racial society where no one particularly- Man, well, <laughs> why is he putting like a disclaimer slash like, speech out as if like you know he works for a presidential how... campaign and something happened you know <laughs> yeah accusations he's reacting to he's yeah he's this was an enemy he's been waiting his whole life <laughs> to fight against this is his cousin that he's been every thanksgiving he's been arguing with is like personified <laughs> in hassan minaj and now is his chance. Now is Sager's chance to. Okay, I will. Okay, guys, do you recorded the segment? The link is ready. I need to forward it to a couple of family members. Can we can I get the link, please? It's a family. Even the thing. rough I cut. It. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. Keep the deleted scenes. Just give me, give me the raw shit. Keep the fucks and the. And they swear words in. Yeah, it's fine. it's fine. They need to hear it. My family needs to hear it. So yeah, Sager as they probably like, what is it? Like the 3% of American Indians who are Republican. I guess this was his <laughs> moment to go to town and took it. And yeah, I mean, by the way, is this, I haven't been to the West for a few years now. Is Like you just email somebody from like the same background as you. What is going on? Like if I I did find the Azzurani, casualness of it. I'm like, okay, I mean, fine, Sagar, yeah. you're famous, but you're saying you've also never met him and you're not in exactly the same line of work. I mean, yeah, kind of, but he's a bit different. So I was also no, they're surprised. they're not at all. I wouldn't say they. W I would say maybe he's also no. He's comedian, shitty comedian. He's a journalist. Yeah, but Netflix. Journalist. No, but Netflix Shettiness social commentary, comedy. Right, that's what he's famous for. I mean, that's what I know him. Sure. And what do you know Sager for? Netflix. Hey, also you too. <laughs> <laughs> you think 
هنوز کامیدی شو honestly they're not that far apart like I'm not even joking too much in my head come on man yeah. don't say break don't break my heart breaking points does not provide any I didn't satire say good or... ob- it's, it's objective statement you know it's just funny I'm not saying they are po- I mean, no, I, find I don't know. They're they <laughs> don't do comedy. Sorry. They do they do new mainstream and journalism and all that, man. I know. I you yeah. Entertainment, whatever. <laughs> what? Okay, all right. You are really push. <laughs> they are part of the human race. <laughs> they are part. <laughs> they are all part of the human race. Okay. <laughs> These are activities humans do. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, yeah sure but yeah yeah but sega really yeah he enjoyed himself i think he he's been but i gotta <laughs> say man not that i'm i'm not crazy like sega and i don't agree with whatever he says but god damn i hate asan minaj yeah, and yeah. i hate people who use their personal tragedies to build a career especially I mean, in comedy man Because like yeah. they put they put audience in such a tough position that like if you don't laugh you're basically yeah. a bad yeah. person. Because I mean, like it's completely know. fine if your entire stand up comedy is based on a lie, but don't exactly like secretly pretend that don't like pretend it, that it's that no you don't do that kind of comedy you do real comedy. Oh or yeah, you yeah. Tell I the mean, truth. Thank you for saying that, but because that brings up to the worst part of his excuse that oh you know a lot of comedy is fiction yeah, yeah but no of course all comedy is fiction or yeah, yeah or when like yeah, what's his name any uh, comedian literally like every single yeah comedy, yeah when right? 90%. the exaggeration the punchline yeah. is so clear or you know anyway it's just yeah yeah no it's not like first a sad story and then goes on to that because again he's doing like a yeah Yeah, it, it's, it's, like this is when, not stand-up comedy. What he does on Netflix, it's supposed it's to a be, type. It it's a very specific. It's a particular type. Well, that's the thing. People like him kind of created it. Yeah, that's why exactly. probably yeah. I hate him so much because they were just they created this, and it started, I guess, with John Stewart, which I really enjoyed. But it did start with that sort of this comedy that is. tries to be sort of informative in a newsy way mm-hmm. and that was yeah that went down in a bad way i guess but then again everything does so whatever yeah and yeah, no no i i mean you're right they are a niche in onto their own but he used to be a sort of a normal comedian he used to have jokes and <laughs> Fine, stuff like give you that <laughs> <laughs> old school uh, yeah he had a relationship Uh, see, implore America. Oh, I see. I see. That's this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that was, the Saudi story was a bullshit one too. Which Saudi story? Like apparently, like he said, oh yeah, like on the day that the that you know what's it called was killed. Um, the nine eleven. No, oh, Ben Laden. No. The Washington Post guy. Oh, Khashoggi. Yeah, he said the day oh, yeah, that Khashoggi he was, in the, was killed. He was in the embassy. I was also at the embassy on the way back. My phone was blowing up and asking me, you know, am I okay? Am I okay? Apparently, he he was telling that story, but he had actually been <laughs> to the Saudi embassy like a whole month, an entire month before that had happened. And then he's like, oh, oh no, you know, I kind of meant like people were still worried anyway. But yeah, I mean. That that one I gotta give him because if he's Indian, so I don't know how he sold them that he was in a Saudi embassy in Turkey. I mean, like no I Saudi embassy one, in the one, U.S. But the the murder. Oh, he said okay, the, but he, the murder happened in Saudi embassy in Turkey, though. So yeah, but maybe you know he's like here to. I don't know. Can have. They send the killers yeah. to every embassy just in case. No. This week we are killing everybody in every embassy. We are catching one guy. Everyone get one guy. Different continent. Like, I'm still worried. I know you're on a different continent, but I thought. Like, I think so. I think so. But yeah. But yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's just like nonsense. Like anyway. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Good week um, for comedy, I suppose. Two of yeah. the most evil, shittiest comedians. And maybe we can wrap it up with our last two stories. 
two stories or one? I thought we have this and Nagorno. If... Oh, right. Maybe we can. I just should I tell people about Nagorno? Yeah, sure. Now? Go and ahead. Then, yeah. So, uh, Nagorno. I don't. Have you been following it? But no, no, a lot no, of... no. I thought maybe France twenty four is killing itself. So I thought <laughs> maybe you've heard something in French media. But so uh, Azerbaijan basically started a special operations in Nagorno-Karabakh region, which was controlled by Armenia, but legally, technically belonged to Azerbaijan until two years ago, where Azerbaijan sort of attacked and sort of uh, uh, took it over, kind of. And then they started recently, last week, a special military operations to clear out a terrorist. And uh, basically, they are taking over the region. And Armenians mm. uh, started saying that we have to leave because they're going to kill us or something like that. And Armenia, uh, now there is about, like, last time I checked, 20,000 people were officially uh, sort of refugeed, I guess, or semi-refugeed. I don't know what is the word for internal refugee. From Nagorno-Karabakh to, Ar like, went from Nagorno-Karabakh region to Armenia. They're basically, Armenians are emptying out. And, yeah, and Erdogan met with um, Aliyev in Nakhchavan region, which is the one of the regions. Uh, it's it's an exclave of Azerbaijan. It's a part of Azerbaijan, separate from Azerbaijan. So yeah, basically, Azeris are taking over Nagorno Karabakh. It seems see. successfully. And there is, by the way, a protest and all that in Armenia. Change of government, probably likely. Mm. I don't know. Some people say maybe war, and for Iran, the important thing is that they are making a you know corridor between their Azerbaijan and um between two parts of Azerbaijan, and if according to the plans they have, that corridor would cut off Iran from Armenia, and Iranians are saying they would not stand for that. So oh, I we'll see. see. Interesting, That's but. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, they're not at war again like they were two years ago. I mean, uh, not really. I mean, kind of, it's kind of similar to two years ago. It's basically as there is moving forward, Armenians yeah. falling back. So, I mean, this time it's, yeah, it's even less, less uh, conflict. Although there was an explosion in a ammunition center or something, like 20 people died, 100 people were injured. So there are explosions and all that, but no, it's not like, you know. I see. Yeah, but shows you, man, you got to make your allies when you can. Yeah, I agree Ukraine with you and... there. Very PVD-like yeah. statement. Yeah, P yeah, PVD has had a profound <laughs> influence on me. I'm, I... I be, I'm going to become a numbers guy, data guy, or a business guy, whatever he is. <laughs> One of these three that he seems to be. So, yeah. And by the way, PBD, Armenia. So it's kind of perfect segue because yeah. he's Armenian, Assyri Assyrian. So, and, you know. And what a had... clown show. All righty, Sam. So, yeah. Let's resume. So, <laughs> PBD, as the video is titled here, had a um, had a religious roundtable, so to speak. And okay, definitely not a religious roundtable. And I'll pass it to you here. It's no, it's like two Muslims versus two Arabs. Sorry, two, two Muslims versus two Christians debate. I don't the know. inaccuracies, the inaccuracies, it starts with the title. <laughs> From the title. Because first of all, we have two Muslims of a single sect of, a, you know, minority <laughs> sect of Islam from two definitely weird Christians <laughs> in a, what can only be described as a 90 <laughs> degree angle table. This is not a round table. Whatever this is, this is not a round table. With this someone like who talks, corner. yeah, and, so, and PBD talks about Everything but religion, really, because he he he's for a everything, numbers he talks guy. About he's a data guy. 
he's the data's guy came here he's interested in to know i mean the transition he makes as a data guy he keeps bringing that as if that's an excuse like so as a data guy let me ask you this and it's like the most nonsensical question follows and that's Man, excuse if you if you're data if that's being a data guy then i'm also a data guy and trust me i'm not i, I wish i was guy. a data <laughs> I wish I was a data guy. I wish I was a business guy. I don't, but so we have two Muslims from, uh, I don't know which version of, uh, exact which version of the death cult of Islam they come from, but this is like, this. they represent the views of, I'm guessing between one to three percent, maybe, of, uh, <laughs> of Al-Qaeda. I mean, <laughs> of Al-Qaeda, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Even they had some of it troubling and this they're, they're like, oh, but, listen, there's oh, a line so... you don't cross, okay? <laughs> Even we... But... <laughs> ISIS, by the way, has issued a statement <laughs> distancing themselves from two, these two guys. <laughs> no, and then you have an Orthodox Christian. I don't know how he uh, Pat found him, found him in America. That's, uh, I mean, I gotta give it to Pat. That's a uh, tough fine and then uh, i think the mauritian guy is some kind of sort of a protestant sort of a new f- <laughs> like these new guys it's like iranian guys who become christians the new guys who become christians they like they they it's so funny i mean we get to it but just like those two assholes like when they become muslim or when that muslim guy became a christian they don't bother to do the same amount of research they do in their own original religion on the new <laughs> religion they join. So it's kind of like, yeah, I go to a, like the, he asks him at some point, which sort of a Christian are you? And he's like, I go to any church, Catholic, Protestant. <laughs> 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 Depends on the which I guess, you know, well, whatever I feel like. So, you know, you have, I mean, it's unbelievable. It was unbelievable. Basically you have converts who are usually, Usually the stupidest of the stupid, like genuinely like uh, converts from one religion to another. I'm not talking about converts from non-religious yeah. to, uh, sorry, from religious to non-religious. Um, they, yeah, and they have a zeal of a convert, which is very famous. They all seem to have, I mean, except the bearded guy who's uh, the orthodox guy who's clearly there to sell books and <laughs> nothing else. He's put his book there as well and he's, <laughs> he's okay, I, these guys are crazies and I, I don't know how my agent agreed to this, but <laughs> the bearded guy is the only one who's like, uh, the, I mean the Christian bearded yeah. guy, not the, those two weirdos. Why are they dressed like that, by the way? Is that, do they think like Islam comes with a uniform or something? <laughs> are they stupid? Do they not? Like, do they you know Muhammad Ali Clay was, for example, Muslim? Like, you know, you don't have to get it. There's no uniform. I don't know why they're dressed like a Pakistani tribes person in the middle of America, but that is, I guess, their choice. But um, what stood out to you in this religious roundtable? Oh, I mean, I mean, these two are just like two of the most open <laughs> people out there. out there. Yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. Yeah. What about no? The Christian guys you don't think are also annoying and. I mean, this Christian guy was, I mean, he was just more like, all about like liberalism, really. And which one? That one? Yeah. I don't think so. I mean. No. Yeah. No, I mean the other one was a bit more. I think. Uh, no, the other guy was the Moroccan guy, no? Yeah, the Moroccan guy <laughs> yeah, was no. more on the side. No, he of was like, just uh, more like a refugee story. That's more what I got <laughs> yeah, out of him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like, like I'm case fucked study. up. <laughs> I'm very fucked up. <laughs> yeah, that was like really his shtick. But he was, I mean, all, all of, I mean, the Muslim guys are just. Because, you know, I mean, pretty much this video sums it up. The one that's called, um, should yeah, I be killed? Kill because look for and it's 22 minutes long for so for 22 minutes <laughs> he asks them the christian guy but so you guys would go, kill go me to, if i'm okay. not if i'm and not muslim yes. in christianity we didn't do this and they're like yes and we just read this page 22 it says we should <laughs> no it's really hilarious look here right like, here he's reading it he's reading off his uh, <laughs> like, yeah, declaration it's, <laughs> it's so funny because 
the Mauritian guy keeps asking as if he keeps expecting the answer to change. And they're like, no, man, he said it. At some point, the guy gets angry. He's like, I kill you right now. <laughs> Like, before I didn't want to now I'm really I'm getting pissed off <laughs> said, before this I said there needs to be a court ruling but now now you're really getting on my nerve <laughs> go to minute I mean from this video go to minute 12 or 13 to 16 is unreal it's unreal I mean it's just it's exactly what you're saying and PBD being PBD <laughs> some point or understood to be such that is not the same thing as people nowadays thinking they are the executors of the wrath of Allah because Muhammad says if anybody changes his religion kill him and the Quran says that you can soothe your 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 heart by fighting the unbelievers yeah, so and I'm, so on Christian, so uh, Robert, uh, let's, let's, let's hear from let, brother Rashid for yeah. one brother Rashid, yeah, go yeah. for it what's on your yeah. mind because this is concerns me do you believe I should be put to death? I believe that the punishment for apostasy in a correct Islamic state is death. I believe that that's so the correct. Let you me finish. Let me just respond, yeah. sir. I believe that that is the correct punishment, which has been revealed by God, both in the Quran and the Bible. And for Robert to turn around, I, I and asked say, you. I was like, well, why are you putting this on me? Why are you getting me involved? You want to kill me? <laughs> He's putting the blame on me. <laughs> Quran. He's like, where did I say kill this guy? <laughs> I never Quran. said that. No, I, I mean... Uh, this LARPer here who's pretending, I think he's pro he loved the attire. He liked how Muslims dressed and he thought I'll join up. Uh, I mean, he's by the way, he's like, yes, the punishment for apostasy may be that, but the definition of apostasy is varied. And most scholars of Islam, and again, I'm not, a, I'm not a you know, big fan of Islam. Uh, in, I mean, you know how much I'm not a big fan of Islam. <laughs> but anyway, but the apost like if you advertise, if you work against Islam, yeah, punishment mm. is technically death, even according to like most hardcore. It's not just like, you know, he converted to <laughs> Christianity. Get him, get him. <laughs> it's just you we didn't have a society of like millions of Christians if Khalifa was just, you know, killing Christians and Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah, it, it, these guys are psychos, man. They, they are, uh, but, but play until yeah. 16 because PBD just intervenes. <laughs> so, let me let me finish. I asked you, do you believe I should be killed yeah. today? And I, and I answered you, sir. I answered yes you, or sir. no? I answered you. Yes or no? I answered you. I think you said yes. Yes. You want me to yeah, answer? Yeah. I said, <laughs> yeah, you answered me. In a proper... Oh, it's to him. I thought he, was, he had asked him the question. Or did they also no. do it to him? Her Islamic <clears throat> jurisprudence. Uh, uh, jurisdiction yeah. in an Islamic nation, all of the laws of Islam and the Sharia as revealed by Slam. God uh, should be applied. Yeah. So if we were including, in that kind of state, would you do including, it? Including, I'm not the one that with proper it. due process, with a proper court hearing, just like any nation of laws, the, uh, the laws of the Sharia should be applied, including the death penalty for not only apostates, but no. also blasphemers. You, you didn't insult. answer me, yes or no? We did answer. Yes, you. we did answer. Yeah, so I should be answer. killed. We did answer. I deserve question. to be killed because I left Islam and became a Christian. According to Islamic law, an apostate like you would be killed. Yes. Okay, Jesus. thank you. And according okay, to the let Bible, me, let me, well. let me. This is a fallacy. And a blasphemer. This is a fallacy. Robert, too cockwe. Like you want to say you fallacy. have it too. It's a fallacy. <laughs> no. Let us discuss this because uh, Why is our, it a fallacy. Our, it's a fallacy. It's, it's let me, let, let, me let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Please condemn Jesus. Yeah. Oh, you think you condemn Jesus? Robert already. Robert already condemned him. Let me finish. Let me finish. On let record, saying that's, you're lying let, about that. Let me finish. That's what happened. Let yeah, me say you, eventually you realized you were lying. Just you're lying. let me finish. You converted your brother you're, Rashid, and then I'll come to you. Go for you it. You converted from Christianity to Islam. Your life is not under threat here in the U.S. I converted from from Islam to Christianity. My life is under death. That's the difference between Christianity and Islam. Okay, so let me Our, ask you this. Yes, I got a question for you guys. I'm a data guy. I'm a finance guy. How many Christians have died? Uh, going from being Christian That's to Muslim, data. how many Muslims have actually been killed or died going from being a it Muslim is to data, a Christian? Can. There's this no is data, data on that Pure. because these kinds of things. Uh, are I'm a data, a data guy. How many cups of rice should I put here?
two, okay. Uh, three. No, I, I, I love how he's, I love how Is he's your like, grandma so, the guy? <laughs> let, let, first of all, I, I, I love how he's like, let us discuss this, let us discuss this. <laughs> Brother Rashid, I don't think they want to discuss much. I think they're much more into physical activity than discussion, shall we say. That's first of all. Second of all, the is the man is talking about himself him being killed and PBD is like so let me ask kill that's very interesting so how many people over the last one what are the data he's like a four-year-old with you know football players cards yeah. like so what is the Christianity what is the power of Christianity like how many Muslims they manage to you know turn around and then what is the Muslim like it's like Pokemon animals he's comparing there I, I don't know what is going on but man yeah these guys are yeah they're fucking crazy these Muslim guys no. They're not recorded. They're oh, not considered yeah. crime. There should be, no, right? I mean, shouldn't be, I, shouldn't there, there? Even if there's some stories be to data. be able to say, yes. you know, X Y Z individual. I have stories. I have oh, one yeah, in one. Mauritania who was condemned for to be executed. I have one. We just got him out to Paris because we negotiated with the government there. I have people right now in Libya. They are under death penalty in Libya. I have people who got killed in Jordan, for example, because I do my show. People contact me. I have people who got killed in Jordan, their parents killed them because of they became uh, uh, Christians from, from a Muslim background. That's we have government. people in different places in the world, in the mm -hmm. Muslim community, they kill them. And if they get if they get to flee, that's the best outcome. I got a question. So, so the, while I'm studying this, there's also Daniel said something very interesting where the, the guidelines of uh, 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 Quran is based on the jurisdiction of the government, meaning where you live, the religion is follow whatever the laws are of that nation. Meaning, uh, you, you can correct me, I'm just giving you what my uh, what I've looked into. Does this, this mean is, these this is rules the apply no matter where you live? Is that across the board? Or is it it's more stricter in certain Muslim nations than other Christian nations? Islam is to be applied forever on every... Christ, man. Like if did they talk, they actually sound like people who like I don't know, like that never I don't. Know, they come from a different country to another country and they learn about that religion for the first time. So they're like, wait, so like you guys, if you do this, you do that. I mean, just at, at you, that level. You... And this guy really didn't help his case. But the next Brother time we're talking Rashid. about systematic stuff, don't say I know one guy in Mauritania. I, I know a guy. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> listen, that's listen. not helping you if the, those I, are your examples don't give examples okay? <laughs> if that's your proof or stats <laughs> i i know a guy from nigeria he's a prince he's a he's a christian prince under the threat from the muslim horde and I, I, mm, are you sure and then he's like but, you know i have guys in libya and all that i'm like wait are we still talking about the same topic or just in general you know people you in guys. libya <laughs> <laughs> no man, but you say you say that, and we laugh at these things. And people who watch us, you know, they get it and all that. But the reality is, though, I've I I mean, I live in a you know Muslim country, and I I've hang out with genuine Christians in Iran and all that. And yeah, to be honest, this is they are the majority though. Like even in Iran, man, I've told you the stories of like the nonsense people talk mm. about Islam. The people who are like in the mosque praying 24 7 or something and they're like yeah muhammad used to fly right and like, what <laughs> when did he say no, that no that yeah when did that came into the mythology i mean yeah so i mean sadly though it is like most people are like you know uh, i mean i would say that, that the muslim guys like really people are as bitter and as <laughs> yeah pathetic. what is wrong with those guys they're just pathetic little. They probably couldn't get laid unless they became Muslim and they gave them a wife first. That's usually how they get you, you know? Like, we have a family friend who joined the Moonies and I, we assume this is the family mm. sort of gossip that uh, uh, they got him through a Russian wife. So mm. that's, uh, you know, I assume they couldn't get, you know, this. I mean, look you at gotta I do mean, what you gotta do. Yeah, you guys, I guess, you gotta say the Ashad if you... <laughs> Ashad and... <laughs> And <laughs> yeah. GBD is, uh, I'm a number Now guy. let's go, yeah. Uh, no, 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 you can correct me after. This is just 
My research and whatever. Right? Listen, I've only heard this, but yeah. I've heard the numbers of Christians are not going up. Yeah. Like, uh, go to the other video now, please. Which one? The the one that is uh, another killing video. Another <laughs> video with the killing in the title. I forget. Uh, They're going to win? They are, uh, no, no, wait, wait. Will Muslims run it's... America in 30 years? Oh, yeah, they are going to win. Yes, they are going to win. And his numbers don't even add. <laughs> go to minutes. Yeah, go to minutes again, 12 and play till 14, I think. And it's just, yeah, or 15. Nice. It, yeah, again, PBD. This part is PBD as his best. Mm -hmm. PBD is the man. You don't understand it. He never takes his eye off the money, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's too funny here. I know what you're talking about. My company. Yeah. So they're in time. Oh explain, God. build, or let me let me continue with this let me continue oh, with this a little bit because this is getting interesting to me so if if in, in insurance there's two ways to build or real estate there's two ways guys build their real estate and their insurance companies let me explain this and you'll see where i'm going with this question one is there's guys that steal from other people okay and they'll say oh you train those guys i'll take your agents you train those guys, I'll take your agents. You're getting 60%, I'll give you 80% if you come to my company. So their entire business model is to take from others, right? And then they're always capped because somebody else is not gonna come and say, he gave you 80, I'll give you 100. And then so now they go to a different guy. And then the other guy will say, hey, he gave you 100, you I'll give, give you 110. 100. Then they'll realize there's only 130, so how much more is left to do? I'll give you 115 if you come to me five more. Okay, I'll come to you. And then eventually, you're stuck. You're not gonna go anywhere, right? Okay. So they're not, these agencies are not baptism agencies. They're converting agencies. I'll convert you to me by me giving you a better life or better heaven or better, you know, dream that I'm selling to you, right? For me, the way I see it is on, and then the other side is guys that recruit people from other industries and they make them realtors. So I'm working at Sears. You should consider getting a real estate license. I convert you. You're a nurse. You should think about being a realtor. I become a realtor. So you understand the two examples I'm giving. I'm recruiting other realtors. I'm converting somebody into being a realtor. Hence, religion, Muslim. I'm targeting Christians to convert them. No, I'm converting people that are, you know, becoming uh, uh, Muslims or just we're having more kids, and that's how we're going to grow religion. Okay. So the criticism and fear that a lot of Christians will say, non-Muslims will say is, if we go the way we do right man you have to agree that that was like the most random ill-timed like random analogy ever no i don't <laughs> i think insurance business in america has a lot in common with the rise of islam and christianity not the way he Fuck put you. it not the <laughs> <laughs> maybe in some different way that was no just... this is exact i i don't know you don't know history enough but the process he described the process of christianization of spain exactly <laughs> like that it was exactly like there were a bunch of people coming saying we offer you hundred <laughs> and then there were a bunch of <laughs> no sorry go further back yeah, i want no. the part where brother rashid asks him is it further back brother rashid is talking and then pbd brings up the question maybe it's a bit later or maybe it's before but i, I, I guess we heard the question though no we, uh, the, the, yeah yeah but play play uh, just okay, I yeah. want right the now, one day rashid muslims are gonna run the world how do, do you not fear that? And I, you, you'll hear that. Okay. And by the way, it's a fair argument because right now the number is, give or take, the Muslim fair population argument. worldwide I think is around uh, 1.7 billion. And it's expected by 2060 to grow by 73, 74% to 3.1 billion. Today they're 24.1% of the world population. By 2060, you'll be 31.1%. These are some awesome. real numbers that they're increasing. And Christians will say, so I love uh, I love how he's talking about children and he it cuts to the Muslim guy and the Muslim guy is clearly panicked for some reason. Like, well, why are you focusing on me? I, I didn't I didn't give birth to all of that. But sorry, so go back to minutes eleven or something. I just want the brother Rashid part because he's so funny. Yeah, I think it's around. But 11, we did though. 10. I went actually back to minute ten, and it's all been PVD since here. Oh my! So, since the... No, no. Just go to eleven, maybe. No, just we're uh, we just listen. We pretty much just listen from nine to thirteen thirty. Just go a bit back, go a bit further back. <laughs> Try it. Who was brother Rashid? This one or the other this one? Guy, this, this guy, this oh. guy. No, this guy is brother. Oh, okay, Rashid. so it's right here, I guess. Uh, a system 
and you cannot even question it. And if you say anything against it, you will be condemned to death. For example, if I say Islam is not the right way to God, I cannot say that in a Muslim country. I will be punished for that. So we are enjoying freedom of speech, freedom of religion, democracy. We can say our opinion. We can have a podcast like that without a problem. Guess what in Morocco? When I became a Christian, we met as Christians in closed doors. We couldn't sing. We couldn't baptize people. We couldn't Ooh. name our kids Christian names. You cannot name him Luke or Mark or anything. You have to name him Muhammad and Omar and Abu Bakr. You can't name them Christian names. This is not true. I, not with that, it's man. true. I lived it. It's not, I it's, lived in it. Islamic law, you, okay, do you know Ahyam Ahl Dhimma? Do you know the principles? I'm not Ahl Dhimma. I'm an apostate. Yeah, you don't talk about other Christians. Well, Christians can name their children. Okay. You lived in a, okay, a Muslim I'm, country. Okay, Could, let, let me finish. Patrick, oh my God, let thank me, God you made that distinction. Let me finish. Yeah. I am a convert from <laughs> Islam to Christianity. That's and different. I had, I had <laughs> hundreds <laughs> like me, girls and boys, they were, we were gathering, we were afraid of police. And we got arrested many times. We got interrogated. So let me get this straight. So, so I want to understand what both of you are saying. So for us, I was born in a Muslim country. My name is Patrick. My sister's name is Paulette. You're saying if a Muslim converts to Christian, you can't just name your kids anything. You have to name them those specific names. Yes. And you're okay with that? You think that's normal? I, I said something even you know more than that. I said that the punishment is death penalty. So forget it. That's what we talked about. No, at the me, beginning, right? Apostle told <laughs> Loving the death of okay, Guys, you yeah. Hold on. It's like, Cut. so when is this killing Cut. happening? Are we doing it here or somewhere Cut. else? Cut. Can I do it now? <laughs> Shall, can I? Can, Brother Rashid is my target, really. I don't even care about the other one, really. Was he like following up on the killing? <laughs> exactly, yes. That's what I was He's following up on the case. Like, so I, I feel like the time for the podcast has finished. Now. It's time for real action. <laughs> Brother Rashid, I have a surprise for you. It's like pulling on PBD's chair. It's like PBD, PBD. So, so when can I kill? PBD, my, the knife is ready. <laughs> can PBD, please, please let me do that. <laughs> and PBD, meanwhile, he's trying to understand stuff. What, what are you trying to understand? <laughs> he's like, no, no, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Let, I have an interesting question. <laughs> so, the numbers thing, you know, how many Christians do you think in North Africa are they killing right now? Right now. <laughs> Well, play a bit more it gets even more hilarious right. so so for you it's not even your level for that is for somebody to go but why is that but that's why? not the treatment of all christians so i that's totally get that but why, of why, Jews. why do you believe that why do you believe if a muslim becomes a christian is the death penalty why do well, you believe this that? is what i want to explain is that um first of all this is found in every religion it's found in every culture the idea that you have to have punishments for defection really? meaning that if you abandon the group yeah, you punishment. are threatening <laughs> the group. and that's why every business, every university, every society <laughs> has community guidelines, for example. Yeah. If you violate the community guidelines, mm -hmm. it's not called blasphemy, it's called a violation of community guidelines, you're expelled from that community, you face consequences. But it goes beyond that because you have uh, restrictions on your speech. Right. I can't we can't look at, you know, this YouTube channel. I can't say certain things on this live stream. Otherwise, the video will be banned. Your ch channel will get in trouble and then you can be prosecuted. You can ha face all kinds of consequences. Again, go back. Yeah, I forgot. This was just really my other point overall on these guys is that these guys, again, like I said, they're very open and they keep on going back to things like, yeah, we say killing is good, but so do other societies and religions. They also kill. So yeah, in the, yeah. I mean the fact, but just on the religious stuff, they, they I mean they are idiots. They don't even understand. Like they don't understand. I mean, in this debate, the Christian guys were right. Like in, I mean, I mean not no. They are both so wrong. You can't even say that because like the Christian guys keep saying that. Look, the New Testament's supposed to trump the Old Testament. That's like yeah, the thing. That's what that's, that's the old the big get thing out about of jail Jesus. card. Yeah, from the get go yeah. here. That's the. Yeah, but then, like, the nonsense these idiots say about Islam, like, they say, no, Shias and Sunnis, they agree on the principles. Oh, my God, I couldn't well, believe when you said that. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, even yeah, PBD didn't. Yeah. That part, he actually PBD. listened. And... 
PPD, like uh, uh, yeah, PPD owns him one part really bad. He's like doing his typical LARPing of, you know, they, when they say Quran, they say Quran. <laughs> like they pronounce it like yeah. they're like from like, uh, you know, middle of Saudi Arabia <laughs> or something like, you know. And he was saying, you know, there is this concept in Islam called dunya, <laughs> he said. Uh, it means dunya, which is like war. It's like the word for word, you know. And then PBD was like, you mean dunya? And he was like, yes, yes, that's what I, I mean, <laughs> You don't have to say it like dunya. I don't know why. What's it? Uh, people who speak, uh, learn Arabic and Spanish, they have to adopt the local like accent of the village that they learned it from. Like she said, uh, in Islam, Muhammad said, talk like a normal goddamn human. But uh, yeah, they, they, they are like awful. But in Islam, yeah, Shiaism, like there are at least three groups of Shias I can think of that believe in holy trinities of their own. Mm. So this idea that, for example, God is definitely one. Uh, for example, by the way, people get Bashar Assad uh, version of Alawite, I believe. Alawite. Ali Allahis, which are basically a name for like a thousand different cults. Uh, all kind of believe in Ali's magical abilities. Kind of replace Jesus with Ali and you get Shiaisms. Mm -hmm. Many, 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 many different sects. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, Shia, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's so idiotic. The debate from both sides is so idiotic. I would say the Robert guy, uh, he comes off as the best just by default because oh yeah, uh, no. there is, two, you have two psycho killers who yeah. are just Lap who are waiting to kill yeah. Brother Rashid. And, and <laughs> Brother Rashid, who's with his annoyingness and yeah. stuff, is really not helping his case. It's kind of by the end of the show, you're yeah. kind of, okay, like I'm I'm starting to rooting for the Muslim. Yeah, <laughs> uh, for sure. I agree with that overall. And by the way, but brother, what Brother Rashid is talking about is uh, the same things kind of like the, like you know with Elon Musk and a couple of other people like the government had to step in and said that you can't name your children mm. a stupid shit like X or 123 or you know your favorite phone number you, like it's sort mm. of the same there are rules in every country about like you can't name your child anything and then these I'm sorry but they are sort of a bunch of losers like I'm talking about specifically Iranians who turn Christians they're converts not Iranian Christians but they are some weird those they like become Christian and then they pick like Kevin <laughs> I need my child's name to be Kevin oh fuck you it's Iran you can't have your child <laughs> being called Kevin I'm sorry that's not an option it's like you know th there is precedent for Christian names in Iran use those if you're really I can't have a stupid I mean, I'm just saying I mean again I don't necessarily agree with it but I can kind of get it if that makes sense you know what I mean? Yeah, I'm just yeah. saying it's not about Islam. It's about culture. Kind every of. Culture. I mean, you can say, yeah, in that case, that is those are the ones that they don't let you. But yeah, you can say maybe in other countries. Uh, I'm sorry, man. Yeah. There are African languages in which Bukantapa is a name. So now we should allow, like, I'm sorry, you can't have that. The kid will be murdered in the mm -hmm. school. Like, you know what I mean? It's just yeah, like yeah. culture. There should be some cultural uh Bad, like uh, homogeneity, not homogeneity, but some, you know, balancing. Yeah, I no, get you. yeah I'm just, I'm not that again. I don't agree necessarily with the laws they have in Iran or in Morocco or wherever, but it's not quite as simply as black and white as these guys put it. That you know, uh, they, oh, they yeah, do political sure. activities and they expect not to get arrested. I'm sorry, but that's just that's life. You do political activities, you get arrested. Yeah, no, that's also exactly that's kind of another way to see it too, because when politics and religion are so close, oh, they're so, they're yeah. always one and yeah. the same. Secularism is a joke. So, I mean, well, yeah. I think anyway. Any but other PBD, particular uh, love, clips? No, no, but I love how Brother Rashid is like. They are going to kill me. They are going <laughs> to kill me and take my wives and children as the slaves. And PBD is like. That is very interesting. Now I want to move on to the numbers game, though. So who's like this is PBD? This is not the reaction. Oh, the boy. man is uh, the man is pretty much asking for help because those two are gonna cut his head off after the show. So, <laughs> so funny. 
Oh god, what a lose, man! That's baby. By the way, this is this is probably the best chance I have. It's kind of my savior moment with Hassan Minaj. That guy, the one, the Muslim guy, the one that uh, kept sort of bringing back up the murder thingy. He was like, "When are we gonna kill brother Rashid <laughs> and all that?" Him, he has five children, man. Yeah, you I know? know. I heard that. That's insane. And. Again, and I, I'm genuinely going back to my original right wing position of we need to bring licensing. <laughs> like seriously, we can't allow like, like up one you can have. I give you one, <laughs> but you can't have like five and be a psycho like this. It's not <laughs> fair to the kids. It's just, yeah. I mean, come on. We need the licensing yeah. system for this. Jesus like, really. Christ, five kids. And why I'm completely fine. I don't understand how can this podcast be up and social services don't like take. I mean, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> because there's a lot of other things in Islam about children that I assume he's sort of following very strictly. <laughs> you know, but sexually. yeah. But okay. All right. Let's wrap this up. Great stuff. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I will see you in our next video. Thank you.